Generation 6 of the Pokemon franchise brings us to an all-around new era for the brand. Under the banner of XY, the video games made their way to the Nintendo 3DS, and the anime was about to get a whole lot more intense, from the visuals to the storyline. While the previous two generations were a chance for the Pokemon company to find their bearings once they took full control of how the anime would operate, it was time to fully make sure that each generation of the anime felt distinctly unique to itself, especially with those two previous generations under their belt. XY feels nothing Nothing like the following final two generations to come in Ash's journey, here offering a deeper look into Ash as a person, his relationships to his friends and Pokemon, all with a bunch of new add-ons and surprises as well. So once again, it is time to embark on the next leg of our adventures with Ash Ketchum as we make our way through the world of Pokemon, from his early beginnings in the Kanto region all the way to the final moments of his Pokemon journey. Just like how each generation of the franchise serves as a jumping on point for new fans to get into Pokemon, this series is able to be viewed as individual parts Parts, as well as part of the full multiple video series. So join along as we document how Ash has evolved into who he becomes by the end of it all, venturing down a nostalgia-driven road whether you are a veteran fan or a newcomer to the franchise. So without further ado, let's hop back into Ash's journey, taking a tour through the Kalos region as we explore the XY era of the anime with three seasons and three movies in total to cover in today's video. Make sure you're in your newest travel attire. Welcome to the complete guide to Ash's Pokemon Journey Part 6. Thanks. Last time on our journey, Ash made his way through the Unova region, accompanied by new traveling companions Iris and Silent. Ash quickly made some new Pokemon friends as well, acquiring all of the region's starter Pokemon and some very unique and interesting ones from the fifth generation to lead him through gym battle wins, but sadly not the league win at the end. On that leg of the journey though, Ash dealt with a new rival in Trip, who didn't offer that much more than Paul did in the Diamond and Pearl era, but gave Ash even more drive to be the best like no one ever was. We also had some fun encounters with legendary and mythical Pokemon, from the forces of nature and how Team Rocket fully comes into their own arc to control them, to the dragon legendaries of the region as Zekrom starts our journey with an electrifying encounter, and Reshiram offering a world-saving experience with the help of a mysterious character named N, as Ash joined in to help take down Team Plasma and their evil plans. And who could forget Meloetta? Ash even had some moments with Pikachu to tighten their bonds even further, proving how far each of them would go for one another no matter what the situation is giving us a heartfelt moment at the end as they decide that their new adventures in the Kalos region will be them together as always, getting stronger than ever, sticking by one another's side. Now on a plane traveling to Kalos with a traveling journalist from that region, Ash is determined to find more adventures, battles, and experience once again in a new land. It's time to continue directly after that into the new region as Ash's plane prepares to land. Okay, so technically it doesn't start with Ash right away. Instead, much like getting introduced to Dawn, we start off at a new home in the Kalos region where we meet Serena, a character we get very well acquainted with in this season who gets woken up by her mother's Fletchling as she has some training to get ready for with a Rhyhorn for some Rhyhorn racing. Now we catch back up with Ash as his plane touched down in the region with Alexa exiting with him, entering the region the only way he would perfectly know how, by falling. At the end of the last season, Alexa revealed to Ash that her sister is a gym leader and the two should meet right away. But upon arriving, we find out that her sister is the gym leader for a different town and is away at the moment. Ash is a little bummed, but he did get to have this encounter with a familiar, yet unfamiliar Pokemon. You and I both know that that Pokemon he saw was just a special form of the Pokemon Blaziken, but we shall get into the whole mega evolution thing as we get into it in the show. For now, this is a mystery chicken. Ash is pushed in the direction of Lumio City to seek out his first gym battle as Alexa parts ways with him for now 
now, and they seem to have enjoyed each other's company from the end of the last season and the first initial episode of this one. When Ash now arrives in the city, he heads straight to the gym, disregarding only having Pikachu with him and not having any prep just yet. And even more so, he doesn't have enough badges to face the gym leader yet, being told that he needs four badges first before he can fully enter the gym and challenge the leader. Ash and Pikachu then get shocked and dropped through a trap door where two new characters come to rescue him, Clement and his younger sister, Bonnie. Clement helps Ash initially while Bonnie catches Pikachu, doing one thing that Pikachu can't stand, being smothered in a hug, specifically even more so from a stranger, getting to a point where he ends up shocking her. And she apologizes to Pikachu and Ash makes some introductions so the three of them here all become a little more familiar with each other. He explains where he is from and what he is here in the region for as they head to an open field for Ash to have his first battle in the new region with Clement as he is open for a battle with him. Who's that Pokemon? It's Furfru! Furfru! During this time, a random Froakie is watching all of this happen. And for those that don't know, this is the water starter for the Kalos region. Clement sends out his Bunnelby with Ash just going with Pikachu. I mean, who else are you gonna choose here, right? Bunnelby seems to be ready to counter the electrical attacks coming his way, even holding his own when attacks like Electro Ball or Iron Tail come at him. Unfortunately, the battle doesn't get to go anywhere thanks to Team Rocket making their debut this season and interrupting the battle. As Ash is getting into facing Team Rocket, the random Froakie jumps in to help, giving Clement an open shot for the Bunnelby to send Team Rocket flying as Pikachu now finishes them off with Froki passing out from the injuries it sustained from jumping into the battle. This was almost a cut and paste from Oshawott from the last generation, but here, Froki didn't outright save the day. He just helped take on some direct attacks and allowed the others to get some direct hits on Team Rocket. In return for the help, they all bring Froki to the professor for the region, Professor Sycamore, at his laboratory. In the meantime, we cut back to Serena for a moment who is clearly having some struggles training with the Rhyhorn for her racing, being knocked off while her mother watches in disappointment. But while this character is being built up and introduced in the background, Ash and his new friends here arrive at Professor Sycamore's lab, getting the Froakie some immediate help as Ash is told by the professor that the trainer who claimed Froakie to start their Pokemon adventure had already abandoned the Pokemon. Again, while being another trope we have seen countless times, at least it's not another fire type starter that's getting abandoned. But this time though, it wasn't for the trainer just being a prick and not wanting to care for the Pokemon or thinking Froakie isn't strong enough, it was for Froakie not wanting to give the trainer commitment to training together, refusing to listen to them. This doesn't happen just once, but multiple times to multiple trainers. Ash ponders on this and chooses to stick around and wait for Froakie to heal up so he can properly thank the Pokemon and give him some respect back. Here is where we learn about what mega evolutions are as the professor is researching more about how certain Pokemon can temporarily evolve into a stronger form through these mega evolutions before turning back to the form they were before. Two things are necessary to help the certain Pokemon achieve this level of power, and that's thanks to mostly these Mega Stones, along with a strong bond between Pokemon and their trainer in most cases. But Team Rocket gets in the mix once again, listening in on everything and trying to disguise themselves as scientists at the lab as well. A pretty helpful Garchomp that works at the lab with the Professor gets sent into a rage as Team Rocket uses a device to try and control the Pokemon, causing quite the commotion now thanks to the series of Hyper Beams blasting in multiple directions. Froki is now up and feeling better, joining Ash and the others to help calm down and rescue the Garchomp. As things get more out of hand with Garchomp, Ash becomes the sole defense against the Pokemon. All of this is now being broadcast on the news where even Serena's mother watches in question of what is going on. Ash's selflessness inspires Clement to not give up in helping as well, doing what he can to get himself and Bonnie up to where this confrontation is happening. Froki helps secure the Garchomp down with Pikachu getting a clear shot at the collar causing Garchomp to act like this, breaking it and successfully calming the Garchomp back down to its calm nature. But now, being on top of this tower, Pikachu falls off as part of the tower begins to crumble after the altercation, and without a second thought, Ash jumps off the tower after Pikachu to catch him, leaving everyone in shock about what is happening. Ash is able to secure Pikachu, but before they both crash land to their deaths, the Mega Blaziken from earlier shows up and catches both of them and lands them safely in the plaza as the Pokemon quickly jumps away, giving us a glimpse as this mysterious trainer is waiting for Blaziken, as he is known as Blaziken 
Iron Mask. You know, that name seems a little too on the nose for what we're looking at here. That's like pointing at Ash and calling him a hat kid. Serena is shown watching the news broadcast as well and has a memory come up of knowing Ash, claiming to have met him many years prior to this moment. After a night of rest from all of this, Ash is given an updated Pokedex for the region. But before Ash's new adventures can begin from here, winning outside of the lab is none other than Froki along with his original Pokeball, giving Ash a clear nod that he wants to join him on his adventures, and has enough respect for him, willing to give this trainer the chance to train with him, unlike the previous trainers he didn't. Ash is excited about this, as Froki sends himself into the ball, giving Ash his first new Pokemon for the Kalos region, and the start of one of the closest Pokemon he will ever have on his journey thus far, despite Ash not knowing this yet. So far, as an intro, this is pretty exciting, and yet we haven't fully passed what I would consider the intro of the series, regardless of already being a couple episodes in. XY so far is clearly taking its time establishing Ash in the region, the morals that he carries, the new companions he will have along the way, and his mysterious new connection to Froki. Speaking of his new companions, we take a look back at Serena for a moment once again as she now wants to head to Professor Sycamore, having a familiarity with Ash and wanting to catch up with him, along with getting her first starter Pokemon for her own journey, with her mother recognizing Serena's wants to do this, but reminding her that she needs to keep practicing her skills in Rhyhorn racing. Thanks to Clement and Bonnie, Ash is brought to a Pokemon Center to register for the Kalos League before he officially starts earning some badges around the area, with Clement expressing to Ash clearly just how much he looks up to the type of person and trainer he is. The bravery he displayed by jumping into action to help the Garchomp without so much as a second thought showcased his character, with Clement drawing from that the strength that he wants to have for himself personally. Once Ash is all set and registered for his adventures here, Clement and Bonnie make the decision that they would like to travel with him, asking Ash if they could join him further, to which he excitedly would love for them to do so. Now this new trio make their way together to Santa Loon City, where Ash can officially take place in his first ever gym battle. Immediately, they run into a new Pokemon, Dedenne, but before Ash could even consider wanting to catch the new electrical Pokemon, Bonnie is extremely infatuated with it, with Clement asking Ash if he can have it for his sister, to which Ash agrees, but the Dedenne gets the berry just given to it taken away by a Fletchling, causing the Dedenne to start crying as it now runs away, leaving Bonnie just as much of an emotional wreck. Froki, on behalf of Bonnie, gets pretty irritated about this and attempts to face off against the bird, and doesn't listen to Ash when he tries to strategize with the water frog, showing us examples of how Froki may have operated in the past with other trainers. Ash does get a chance to calm Froki down and stop him from wildly going after the Fletchling, listening to Ash as he plans out their strategy to battle the bird and hopefully catch it. Clement, who is an inventor of sorts, tries using a device to bring in flying-type Pokemon, but it doesn't work quite right and instead it attracts a swarm of Beedrill, reminiscent to the multiple other times a swarm of Beedrill have been a problem for our main characters. Eventually, after running away from the swarm and messing with the machine so much, it explodes, causing them all to fly out of the direct area and away from the Beedrill, leaving Clement disappointed in himself for not having the invention working. Ash does what Ash does best and cheers Clement up by telling him how cool it was that he created a device that can attract Pokemon directly to it, despite it being a swarm of Beedrill. It's a nice trait that Ash has when it comes to his friends, even ones that he's just met, giving Clement more to look up to about him. Ash now plans with Froki how to go after the Fletchling, being able to get close enough for Froki to send in an attack, but the Fletchling is clearly toying with them, soaring higher to evade the attacks, but gets tricked over a fake Froki, leaving it open for Ash to throw a Pokeball at it, but the Fletchling quickly escapes from it. Froki is able to land a direct hit, sending the bird plummeting towards the ground, but Ash throws another Pokeball, capturing it before the Fletchling crash lands. Afterwards, Fletchling comes back out as Bonnie decides to teach it the values and morals of not stealing, and makes peace with the bird. Dedenne is witnessing this from afar, and doesn't make itself known to the others for the time being. Now a word from our sponsor. Shout out to today's sponsor, Displate. Displates are one-of-a-kind metal posters designed to capture your hobbies and passions to decorate your wall space with. Clearly, I have a lot of hobbies and passions that I like to showcase online, and now thanks to Displate, I can easily show them bigger and bolder on my walls as well. Displate was kind enough to send over a few, just some of my favorite things in the world here, and it was a lot easier to put up than I even imagined. The best part about it is how it doesn't require tools to hang up, and even better than that, no damage is done to my walls either. It took me seconds to do. 
literally. I can interchange them whenever I want to look at a different display instead, and I couldn't be happier with the quality of the posters as well. I'm also a big metal fan. And no, I'm not talking about the music genre, I'm talking about the material of the poster, mainly because it makes this sound. <laughs> Displate has licenses from some of the biggest IPs out there that you can think of, from video game franchises to your favorite big screen blockbusters, and even more to fit into your different interests you have. Even just some really cool works done by some talented artists that you can discover as well. And with my link in the description, you can score yourself a discount on some displates. Use my discount code Jordan and get 20% off your first one or two displates and even 30% off your purchase of three or more displates. Honestly, I think these are just really cool. They're made in Europe, they ship out and deliver within four to five business days, and ordering from Displate helps support this channel directly. And I'm already looking at the next set of them that I'm going to order. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring today's video. Serena ends up at Professor Sycamore's lab, curious about Ash further, but also ready to get her starter Pokemon for her own adventure. Learning where Ash and company have gone off to and now having to make the decision about which starter Pokemon she would like to choose. Will it be Froakie, the water starter, Chespin, the grass starter, or Fennekin, the fire starter? She had pretty much already made up her mind going with Fennekin, and as a Fennekin appreciator myself, that's a solid choice. With her now heading towards Ash, Ash and friends are taking some time to eat and recover from their adventures thus far, as the Dene sneaks in to take some food before running away, causing them to follow it. In doing so, Pikachu and Dedenne get separated from everyone else, forcing the two to work together to get back to the others, with Team Rocket seeing a chance to get both of them. The two fend off the attempts to get them, as they now end up in a river with Fletchling help spotting them for Ash and friends to go meet back up with. Clement brings out another invention that can help quickly recharge the Dene, who isn't in the best condition right now from everything that had just happened. While the invention works at helping the Dene, it quickly turns into a problem once it won't turn off and it explodes. So that seems like a constant running trope for Clement in his inventions. When Team Rocket comes back into the picture, the Dene helps fend them off with Pikachu as Clement is able to catch the Dene as he lets Bonnie play with and take care of the Pokemon like she wanted to all along. While they continue on from there, Serena isn't too far behind, dealing with the Vespa Queen and eventually making her way to a Pokemon Center near her. Serena gets to spend some time at that Pokemon Center, just being happy to be on her own adventure and away from training for Rhyhorn Racing, eager to catch up with Ash soon enough. Speaking of him, he runs into Viola, a photographer who helps point him in the direction of the gym, which he quickly continues running up to. At the gym, a Helieptile who is excited to see Ash is there, as this is the same one who belongs to Alexa. The journalist Ash traveled with to the region as she is there as well, with Viola coming back around from just moments ago as she is is the sister Alexa was mentioning from last season, meaning that yes, Viola is the gym leader and reveals that she specializes in bug type Pokemon and loves sharing her photography of them. Bonnie awkwardly tries to wingman her older brother, telling Viola to be Clement's wife, with Clement pulling her away from annoying Viola. Ash begins his first ever gym battle for the Kalos region as Viola sends out her Surskit, as Ash sends out his Pikachu. Thanks to Surskit using Ice Beam, the ground becomes this skatable surface for it to move quickly, even with Pikachu putting up some strong attacks, Surskit has a good advantage here now and is able to take out Pikachu pretty easily in the end, much to Ash's surprise. Now he sends out Fletchling while Serena arrives and gets invited by Alexa to join in and watching for now. She excitedly watches Ash as him and his Fletchling are able to defeat the Surskit as she now sends out her Vivian, who quickly traps Fletchling within a sticky web that the Surskit had left previously, keeping the bird from flying away as Vivian uses a solar beam to directly hit Fletchling, causing Ash to lose his first gym battle in the region and in front of Serena. Ash immediately asks for a rematch soon, to which Viola accepts, with Ash now heading to the Pokemon Center to heal his team back up. Serena was hesitant to say something to him as he rushed out of the building, but since he forgot his backpack, she decided to bring it to him there. The sisters then discuss Ash, with Viola seemingly unenthusiastic about Ash's abilities as a trainer, even thinking that there wasn't this strong bond between him and his Pokemon based on how they operated together in battle. Alexa is on Ash's side though, saying not to down play Ash so easily, and that the rematch may go completely different. Serena arrives at the Pokemon Center handing Ash his backpack while he's deep in thought as Clement and Bonnie say hello to her, not having the chance during the battle to formally meet, with Ash apologizing for not even noticing that she was there and was watching. Serena wanted to say something further to Ash, but she gets cut off as Ash's Pokemon are returned to him fully recovered from the battle. Alexa also stops by, wanting to help train Ash before the rematch, testing out his Pokemon skills against the move Gust. Using her Noivern, to use this move against his two Pokemon. Even then, both of the Pokemon are then blown away as Ash jumps to catch both of them so they don't get hurt from it, having the chance to verbally 
hype up his Pokemon to do their best and that they can overcome this. After another test, while faring a bit better, both Pokemon can't handle the attack thrown their way, with Ash worrying how he will be able to defeat Viola at this rate. Serena finds an opening to speak with Ash further, handing him a handkerchief to use and asking Ash if he remembers who she is, as she has been thinking about this moment so deeply since noticing that he is in the region. Sadly, he doesn't fully remember who she is, which, ouch, that sucks, but he does remember what she is referencing, which was a special Pokemon summer camp that Professor Oak had run. This leaves her kinda bummed about it, traveling all the way thinking about how this would play out. She further explains that Ash told her back then to never give up until it's over. While appreciating hearing that, he gets back into training for the night and by dinner, Ash thinks that he has a strategy to go up against Viola with, looking forward to showing it off during the battle. Also, Clement has another invention he makes explode on him. Just wanted to point that out. And now it's time for the official rematch as they start out the same way, Surskit versus Pikachu. Thanks to Ash's training, Pikachu is able to deal with the icy battlefield, with Ash having Pikachu lodge his tail into the ice for balance, being able now to aim a thunderbolt with accuracy to knock out the Surskit. As she prepares to send back out her Vivian, Ash calls Pikachu back, swapping out for his Fletchling instead for another rematch. While having a better fighting chance, Fletchling still gets overpowered by Vivian's Sleep Powder and Solar Beam combo, resulting in the bird now being knocked out. Pikachu comes right back out and needs to clutch the win here, but with Vivian's Sleep Powder, Ash is worried that he can't break through to defeat it. Serena calls out to Ash to keep his determination up, giving Ash the confidence to stay in the fight, having Pikachu attack himself to zap away the sleep effects on him. Pikachu sends in another attack that directly hits Vivian, knocking it out, giving Ash his first gym battle win in the Kalos region and his first badge, the Bug Badge. He credits his win to all of his new friends who helped him in training to be able to pull this off as he now heads in the direction of the next gym battle. Before they go, Ash asks Serena what she plans on doing now, leaving her a bit stunned in the moment to the question. Ash jumps in before she can answer, offering her to join on with them as a group, to which she happily agrees to do, making the group an official team of four companions for the first time since the Ruby and Sapphire era. Serena ends up explaining to Clement why she wanted to join the crew, fully going back to the handkerchief, which was Ash's in the first place. But at the summer camp all those years ago, she ended up lost at one point in the woods, getting her knee injured after being jump scared by a polywag. Ash eventually finds her and uses the handkerchief to wrap it around her leg, then helping her back up as he gave her the original advice of never giving up until it's over. Continuing on to then help her get out of the forest and safely back to the camp itself, as she never forgot that moment, with Ash now fully remembering the whole thing, accepting the return of the handkerchief. We spend some time getting a bit into the whole Rhyhorn racing stuff with Serena, as she teaches Ash about it and how to do it. But later on, Serena ends up baking some cookies, storing them in a container and giving them to Ash as a personal thank you for what he did for her back at summer camp. Clearly, there is a spark of some feelings here, and one thing Ash really doesn't deal with in Pokemon is a love interest written into the show. Now, this is early in their journeys together here, and a lot more happens, but it genuinely is just really sweet. Who's that Pokemon? It's Delphox! <laughs> We then get a major reveal about Clement in his past. Going back to the whole first gym, Ash approaches, having a badge limit and the technology there refusing to let him in. Well, Clement here is, or was, the gym leader of that gym, but it drained him, taking up all of his free time from getting to work on his true passions of being an inventor. So one day he came up with an idea to build a robot to act like him and stand in place as the gym leader, giving him the name Clembot. And, well, things got out of hand. He programmed a difficulty level to the Clembot that focused on trainers skills that are equal to those who have four badges or so, with Clembot quickly turning on him for not having any badges. Suffice to say that the Clembot took over the gym and won't allow those with under four badges to enter, and Clement has failed multiple attempts to sneak in and fix the problem. Upon all sneaking in together, Clement says the correct code that bypasses the gym badge limit and is able to face off against his own creation. He's able to mostly defeat the Clembot in battle, taking an open opportunity to fix the programming, earning control of the gym once more. He makes a decision though, going to speak with his father regarding the whole being a gym leader thing, wanting to go on this adventure with Ash as his father understands, giving his children a hug and supporting his choice. Later on, Clement promises Ash a full-on gym battle with him as the leader once he does have four badges, and it will be a fight to remember. In the night though, the Mega Blaziken and Blaziken Mask are still around as later on the Vigilante and his Mega Pokemon cross paths once more with the group.
group. It's also revealed to us, the audience, that the Blaziken mask is actually Clement and Bonnie's father. Go figure. Clement also becomes the trainer of the last regional starter not owned yet in the group, Chespin, which is nice to see that the starters are spread between all of the main characters here, rather than just in Ash's party. On their way to the next gym, Ash spends time with Froki for a while, being able to truly get in some training with him. Eventually, Ash learns about the Battle Chateau, where certain formal ranks can be given out and earned by taking place in battles there. So of course Ash wants in, and needing to abide by the rules, he can only battle certain ranks based on his own basic ranking. To earn the title of Baron rank, Ash must battle with Chester, a trainer who is going to use a fletchling against Ash's Pikachu. The battle isn't anything too fancy, despite the fancy situation they're all in, as Pikachu is able to defeat the fletchling, and Ash now being granted a white cloak along with the new title of Baron. Viola is there for her own battle to go for a new ranking, but loses to Grant, who ends up being the gym leader for the next city's gym that Ash looks forward to facing soon. Serena ends up finding a hobby or passion all her own with that of Pokevisions, these self-made TV programs that feature trainers making some sort of fun or informational video about them and their Pokemon. It's like YouTube, but on TV, so I guess it's more like public access television. Clement has the gear and the gadgets to actually produce something like this as Serena wants to make one. Everyone seems to be on board to making this happen, aside from Ash, who just wants to train in preparation for his next battle. So a bunch of shenanigans happen here, with Ash mostly just training. Later on, they run into Alexa again as they end up helping her with her next article and seeing some really cool Pokemon along the way. Ash still spends some more time after this training for his battle with Grant, and knowing the power of Grant's Onyx from witnessing firsthand how powerful its rock tomb attack is. He tries to come up with a way that he can counter this move, pointing his strategy towards Froki's high leaping abilities. Once arriving in Silage City, Ash wastes no time in making his way to the gym, which happens to reside on the top of a mountain overlook that he must climb to reach it. Before Ash even has a chance to battle, he gets a new kind of challenge here, one that harkens back to stuff from the Orange Islands, where Grant challenges him to scale the wall while his friends get to use this handy elevator to make their way up. After doing so, Grant explains that he climbs the walls to find a balance of concentration, along with keeping a calm composure. Regardless, the real battle starts, with Grant sending out Onyx first and Ash sending out his Froki. Onyx proves to be the fierce opposing Pokemon that Ash had worried about, with Froki taking this challenge head on with full determination, finally being able to use those high jumps to scale the beast and directly hit Onyx with a water pulse that ultimately knocks the rock snake out. Grant now sends out a Tyrun. It's not a shiny blue one like the one I recently caught in Pokemon Go, but it's still cool I guess. Ash stays steady rocking with Froakie on the field, but the mini T-Rex is able to defeat Froakie fairly fast. Ash sends out Fletchling next, and even though the rest of the battle is fierce, this little bird is able to show off some skill in battle finally, but just not enough to win, being knocked out as well. Pikachu comes out as Ash's last hope to win the battle, and thanks to his Iron Tail attack, Pikachu is able to counter Tyrant's Rock Tomb attacks, getting in close for a direct Thunderbolt attack, knocking out Tyrant and giving Ash the win in the battle. Grant was extremely impressed with Ash in this battle though, and tells him he truly earned this win, as Grant grants Ash with his second badge, the Cliff Badge. With Ash being pointed in the direction of the next gym based on Serena's suggestion of where to go, Grant warns Ash that the next gym battle he may face, there will be some differences than what he has faced before, getting him both excited to see what that means, and somewhat a bit concerned about what that means. Along the way to the next gym, the group gets distracted by a special exhibition battle with the champion of the Kalos region, Diantha, who also doubles as a famous actress. Based on her status as the regional champion, Ash wants a battle with her, while the others are just excited to meet her. While she is kept away from the public who is chomping at the bit to meet her, Professor Sycamore shows up and is able to sneak the group into a back area as he is studying the Mega Evolution abilities of Deantha's Pokemon, a Gardevoir. Ash tries to go to the room next to them to speak with Deantha, but she opens the door, surprising all of them. Her manager quickly appears though, telling them that she is too busy at the moment and she invites them to hang around and watch her battle, to which she wins and swiftly leaves for a movie shoot that she was scheduled to go be at. With nothing the group can really do now, they decide to go and get some of the town's famous cake, which upon arriving to get some, the line is very long, but they're able to at least grab one last slice before they run out. Before they can even share this slice though, they notice a lady saddened over not being able to get one. This lady turns out to be Deantha, to which the group offers her their slice, and Bonnie offers her to marry Clement. Ash though takes the opportunity to ask her for a battle to which she accepts, but but not long into this battle, Team Rocket interrupts things as usual, and now we get to witness a full Mega Evolution process take place, with Gardevoir turning into a Mega Gardevoir, who makes quick work of Team Rocket. Right after, her manager 
shows back up and needs to take her away, back to her busy schedule. Clearly, she tries to sneak off in disguise to have some sort of normalcy like just trying to get a slice of cake, but between her acting schedule and her battling schedule, she doesn't get much freedom from the limelight anymore. So she enjoyed her segue from work with Ash and company as she looks forward to a full-on battle with Ash down the road. From here, they run into a girl named Karina who is on roller skates, traveling along with her Lucario. They challenge Ash to a battle as she is on a winning streak and wants to earn their 99th win in a row. Of course, Ash accepts this, and the two of them get right into it, with Lucario being her choice and Pikachu being Ash's. Lucario wastes no time in taking out Pikachu with a barrage of attacks, earning her the win, but hands over a citrus berry for Pikachu to heal up as they proceed to have lunch together and surprise, she's the gym leader for Shalor City, the place Ash was heading anyway. She reveals to the group that Lucario can't mega evolve yet, as she doesn't have the mega stone for it. In the meantime of not having the stone required, she has been building up the strongest bond possible with her Lucario, looking forward to earning her 100th win hopefully soon. And thanks to an altercation with Team Rocket, the 100th battle is decided for her as it becomes a double battle with Ash and Karina, facing off against Jesse and James. Of course, they defeat them with ease, and this marks her and Lucario's 100th official battle win in a row. Karina wants to now set off and search for the Mega Stone for Lucario, as Ash and company ask to tag along for now, wanting to be there for this special occasion upon hopefully finding it, to which she agrees. Little do they know that this whole ordeal would turn into one big side quest for their adventures, spanning several episodes. On their path to find the stone, they get pointed in the right direction from this photographer named McGinty. No, not Troy McGinty from Max Keeble's Big Move, but he does take a nice photo of them all where Serena scoots closer to Ash a bit. How cute. They then enter a cave system where the stone could possibly be, when a Blaziken guards the path forward, getting into a heated battle with Lucario. As things aren't looking too good for them, Ash stops Serena from interfering with the battle, claiming that this is Karina's fight to overcome as he helps encourage her to not give up. When Lucario is able to finally get the upper hand, Karina's grandfather appears and informs her that she has won the battle, and this was her final trial before getting the Megastone for Lucario, the Lucario Knight. Yeah, I feel the same way you feel about the naming structure here. In her excitement, she celebrates by Mega Evolving Lucario for the first time. Ash offers another battle to Karina so she can test out the strength that Mega Lucario has, but during the battle, Mega Lucario begins getting more enraged, having its eyes glow red and battling with some dirty tactics. Karina tries to stop Mega Lucario, but it won't listen to her as Ash jumps in to protect Pikachu, and her grandfather sends out his own Lucario to fend off Karina's. Luckily, her Lucario returns to normal form and passes out. At the Pokemon Center now, her grandfather explains that this power is new to Lucario, and it could be easy for Lucario to become overwhelmed and uncontrollable as Karina needs to work with Lucario in controlling the power it draws from the stone. He takes her outside for a battle between Lucarios as they both are mega evolved and face off for training, but the battle doesn't go as planned for her still, with her grandfather letting her know that her Lucario is too prideful in its abilities and that she doesn't fully understand her Lucario enough to have the proper bond needed. Before she can continue her gym leader duties, she is sent to a mountain to train further against another trainer that has a Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. Ash and company tag along and try to keep her in positive spirits about her training. On their way to the mountain, they have some time to train and eventually have another run-in with Team Rocket, where Lucario wants to Mega Evolve and through this battle, Karina goes in and out of being able to control the Mega Lucario, having moments where it can break through and listen, but also having moments where it cannot be controlled before fainting once more. Now at the mountain, a trainer named Mabel and her Mawile are there, getting into a battle with one another's Mega Evolved Pokemon to test out their strength, with the Mega Mawile taking the win. Clement has another invention blow up, but aside from that, Karina is able to learn and train properly to fully control Mega Lucario, and things are all swell. Ash ends up deciding to go train some more, knowing that his actual battle with Karina will be a tough one as she then departs from the group. During this period of time, Ash is able to come across the Pokemon Halucha, and becomes pretty determined on wanting this powerful Luchador on his team. Through help Helping its escapades in the forest of earning the reigning champ title of Forest Champion, Ash extends an offer to Halucha to join his team, to which it agrees as Ash sends out Froakie to battle. The two end up colliding, causing a double knockout, but Ash thanks Halucha for a great battle overall, and officially Halucha joins Ash's team. Compared to last season, it's about time Ash caught another Pokemon already. Furthering his training, Ash gets familiarized with air battles. They're just like regular battles, but they're done in the air. Go figure. During his battle, where his Halucha is facing off against 
against a Talonflame, the fully evolved form of Fletchling, Ash's Fletchling watches the battle to study Talonflame. And thanks to Halucha's gliding abilities and not flying abilities, Halucha loses the battle, causing Fletchling to get a chance at battling its final form. As Fletchling falls behind though in this battle, the determination it has helps evolve it into a Fletchender, learning some new fire-related moves to boot. This new burst of power and speed fully helps Fletchender defeat the Talonflame and feel pretty confident. After a few more side adventures and even some time going to a summer camp similar to the one that Ash and Serena both originally met at, the group arrive at Karina's gym, with Ash being ready to face her in an official gym battle this time. Both trainers seem more ready than ever to battle, with Karina back on a winning streak and Ash having had some time to train up for this battle. But first we have a fun and weird part. This is not the stuff in which Grant warned us about some time ago, but we'll see more of that as they have to face the Tower of Mystery, which is currently inaccessible thanks to water blocking off the pathway to reach the island. Yeah, so here in the meantime, Ash ends up having to dance after trying to adapt a Groovin battle style. No, not that battle styles. Get that out of here. So to train, Clement pulls out his not a very good dancer automated good dancing device to help, but it blows up and Ash isn't a good dancer. So Serena offers to help Ash learn to find this rhythm, but after several hours, nothing gets much better. Eventually, the tide opens up for them to cross to the island that houses the Tower of Mystery. Karina's grandfather appears once more, telling Ash the rules of the tower here. They get told the history of the first ever Mega Evolution and how it started with Lucario, and through generations their family has protected Mega Evolution Island. They all then share in a dinner, Team Rocket tries stealing a sacred and secret scroll, they all rescue it back, and as the next day arrives, it's officially time to battle. Karina sends out Minfu as her first Pokemon, with Ash choosing to send out his Halucha. The two go back and forth, but the Minfu is getting the upper hand as Ash has to tap into his training and dancing practice, following Serena's guidance of flowing with his own natural instincts. And from there, he is able to get into a flow with Halucha and take down the Minfu, netting the first win of the battle. She now sends out her Machoke as Ash swaps out for his Fletchender, who gets a great chance to shine here. While still taking a few licks from Machoke, Fletchender ends up clutching the victory with a Flame Charge. Now down to her last Pokemon, she sends out her Lucario and Mega evolves it instantly with Ash choosing to keep his Fletchender in the fight. But Mega Lucario is a lot more focused now and in sync with Karina, being able to quickly defeat Fletchender. Ash sends back out his Halucha for the battle, but once again, Mega Lucario is able to land some powerful attacks and direct hits, knocking out Halucha. Both down to their final Pokemon, Ash sends out Pikachu for the finisher. Even with some powerful attacks and countermeasures coming from Mega Lucario, Pikachu puts up a strong fight, being able to hit Mega Lucario with a direct Thunderbolt in the end that knocks it out, officially defeating Karina and earning Ash his third badge, the Rumble Badge. Karina shares in a bro fist with Ash, as they have a great respect for one another as one day, they may just battle again. As they set forward a path towards the next gym, Serena finds a purpose that she truly sees herself doing, and that's becoming a Pokemon performer, a goal that requires her to compete in Pokemon showcases to show off their relationship and bond to their Pokemon. But as for now, this is where we leave off for the first season of the XY anime. Lots of intense training, fun battles, and some really interesting characters have been met along the journey, but we still have so much more to dive into on the horizon. Who's that Pokemon? It's Spritzy! Spritzy! All right, time for a little reiteration. I've said this in many of the parts here when talking about this, but since each video is separate, we have to say this again. The Pokemon movies really have no impact on the main story of the anime, so I don't like to spend too much time going into all that happens in the films for these videos. The movies don't really take away anything from the journey, and they don't add anything to the journey. All I can really say is that sometimes they can emphasize the characters and their personal traits a bit, but no matter what, whatever happens by the end of the film, it won't impact the story. It won't impact who a character is, and you wouldn't miss anything in the anime if you didn't see a particular film. I'm still mentioning the movies at this point with them technically being canon, but it's just a loose side story that has has no consequences to the overall bigger picture. The first XY film, Diancie and the Cocoon of Destruction, puts our characters into a situation having to deal with the mythical Pokemon Diancie, along with the two main legendaries from this generation, Xerneas and Eveltal. Here in the film, there is a whole society of Carbink that live within an area called the 
diamond domain along with their ruler, a Diancy who isn't powerful enough to have the diamond creating powers needed to help keep alive and healthy the heart diamond that keeps their home alive. In terms of Pokemon just being Pokemon, the Carbink society seems to be a lot more advanced in many ways as we see the Carbink having different names for themselves, being able to speak and just operate differently from more animal-like ways of living that the majority of wild Pokemon do. Diancy's story here leads her to need the help of Xerneas to grant the power needed to her to be able to help the Heart Diamond. Along this journey, Diancy ends up meeting with Ash and friends, getting a bit distracted from her own story, and gets to experience a life outside of the society she's in, and all of the freedoms that come with that. After being distracted with Ash and everyone, she returns back to the Diamond Domain to find out that the Heart Diamond has died, sparking the others to help Diancy to do what she can in finding Xerneas. While some nefarious characters want to capture Diancy and use her powers for their own personal gain. Through this, that cocoon of destruction in the title comes into play, as it houses Eveltal, who gets disturbed by all that is going on, sending the Y legendary Pokemon into a rage, using its powerful attacks to turn humans and Pokemon into stone. Eventually, the only way to defend from Eveltal is Diancy finding the strength to Mega Evolve, being able to create a heart diamond that turns into a shield from Eveltal's attacks. Yes, the film has more death scares for our main characters in Pokemon like usual, but Xerneas ends up coming around to save the day, restore those that are technically dead, and ends up being able to calm Eveltal from its rage and everything is okay. While the film has some fun and interesting Pokemon involved here in the mix, the balance of Eveltal's representation of death and Xerneas's representation of life just kind of leaves on a note of what you're getting at face value here. The deeper tone the movie was looking to explore comes off more surface level that acts as a pass to just give us an extra problem that's too out of hand that a another Pokemon and their force has to come and solve it. Sure, Diancie gets to experience a new way of life as well as finding the strength to Mega Evolve, but that's really all there is to the story. Ash and friends are just involved in their more recent capacities of sidelined assistance, as some solutions to save the day are completely out of their control, and they're just as much viewers of what has happened as we are at moments. The characters just move forward on their journey as we continue on to the second season of the XY anime. See, I told you I was gonna keep it short when it comes to the film side of things. Thanks. We continue our newest quest in the Kalos region with the next season of the XY era, XY Kalos Quest. The name just fits, you know? Not far into continuing on our way to the next gym battle, Ash spends time learning the ninja way and his Froakie ends up evolving into a Frogadier. Serena even finds time to make peace with her mother regarding her own passions in life versus Rhyhorn racing, beating her in a Skidoo race and earning her mother's blessing to go after being a Pokemon performer. Ash even catches a new friend for his travels, a Gumi. Eventually, the group gets to Kumarine City, where we get to meet Ramos, the gym leader for the city, before Ash officially goes to battle him. When Ash does go up to battle with him, he's more interested in tending to his gardening activities over rushing into a battle, giving Ash some advice about losing sight of what's important if you only look at what is in front of you. As we get into the battle though, Ramos sends out his jump fluff as Ash uses Fletchender. The flame bird is able to burn up the jump fluff pretty easily, with Ramos now sending out his weeping bell next, who is able to poison and then slam Fletchling to take it out of the battle as well. Ash decides to send out his hallucinations but sadly, Halucha ends up with the same fate that Fletchender did, getting poisoned quickly and slowed down for an easy knockout. Ash is now down to his final Pokemon, choosing Frogadier to face the Weeping Bell, and through his skillful training with Ash, he is able to deflect and protect itself from the poison attacks and scores a direct aerial ace hit, knocking the Weeping Bell out. Ramos's final Pokemon for the battle is a Go-Go, but Frogadier uses a combo of Double Team and Water Pulse to take the go go out, resulting in Ash winning the battle and earning the Plant Badge. Ash has appreciated how how much Serena has been supporting him, so he returns the favor, supporting her with her debut performance in a Pokemon showcase in the same city, hyping her up about it. In the meantime, the city is all decked out for a festival that celebrates trainers and their bonds with their Pokemon. The festivities center around giving special gifts to their Pokemon at the end of the main celebration day under a tall central tree called the Pledging Tree. This whole festival ties into some more traditional lore regarding the city itself, and of course our group here wants to share in the customs of the city. To keep the presence a surprise, Ash and Serena go out separately to look for the perfect gifts while Clement wants to use his inventing powers to create the perfect gift. Bonnie though gets tasked with watching the Pokemon for all of them. As Ash and Serena are now on their own and getting some downtime from the main adventure, she starts getting awkward and a bit uncomfortable as the setting feels too intimate and could be mistaken along the lines of a date. Ash though couldn't be more oblivious or even focusing on anything but what they are actually out and about doing. We can already take note of Serena's feelings about Ash just from how her journey in the show begins, as well 
well as their time training and hanging out together within the group, or even stuff like when she gifted him the cookies. So these feelings that she has may just come from herself being so uncomfortable about her own feelings, not fully wanting to confront them properly, at least for now. Ash at one point ends up going to look for something himself, as every time he finds something to think about, Serena has pointed out why it may not be the most practical or even personal gift he could choose. So they promise to meet back up at a certain area later on in the day. But after some time has passed, they meet back up as Serena has found the presents she thinks are perfect for her Pokemon, as Ash, not surprisingly, hasn't found a thing, being concerned that he doesn't know what the perfect gifts would be. As they get on the monorail together, Ash gets stopped for being the one millionth person to ride, given a blue ribbon and congratulated for doing so. This will mean something later, it's not just for random sake. Ash talks to Serena about not being able to accomplish finding the right presents, as she points out that his Pokemon are very similar to him, specifically because of the bonds that they share. And instead, she tells him to think about what he would want if he were given gifts. From this, Ash gets an epiphany and departs on his own as Serena heads back to Clement and Bonnie. Bonnie shows Serena the present that she's working on for all of the Pokemon, as it's a drawing that she made of all of them. Ash eventually returns with a large haul of gifts, and the group now head to the pledging tree to present the presents to their Pokemon. We see Serena and her Pokemon having a nice time as they receive their presents. Clement presents his invention of a music box, hopefully it doesn't blow up. Bonnie shows off her drawing as Ash then reveals to his Pokemon all that he got for them, which is a giant pile of berries since the way to Ash's heart is food. So he figured it would be the same for his Pokemon as well, to which they all did enjoy. Before the day ends, there is one present left and it's made out to Serena. Inside is a new dress sent in from her mother for her first Pokemon showcase. The night ends with some fireworks as Ash gives Serena a gift as well, being the blue ribbon that he was given earlier as a thank you for helping him in finding the perfect present for his Pokemon, as she is overwhelmed with joy over the sentiment, treasuring the ribbon for what it represents. I know that was all really sort of a side thing, but Ash's journey here regarding his friendship with Serena is pretty pivotal for this generation, and it's honestly just really sweet. Serena finally gets to perform in the showcase, to which she is understandably nervous, but uses advice from Ash to guide her into giving it her best shot, and that her doing this, whether she excels or fails at it, it was never a waste of time. At first, things seem to go well, until they don't, causing her to be out of the running to win the whole thing, being pretty bummed out about it, but not wanting to lose her composure fully to everyone around. Privately, she ends up breaking down and crying when looking out into the ocean, mixed with emotions of sadness for her loss, but grateful to be on the path that she is now. Before long, she takes out a pair of scissors to cut her hair and puts on a new outfit, adding on the ribbon that Ash had given her as a present to keep close to her and be a reminder of her own strength. From here, the group now head back on their journey to the next gym, which now will be back in Lumio City, where he was promised a special battle after having four other badges. During this time, Ash's Gumi ends up evolving into a Sligu, and even learns a new Dragon-type move as well. Clement even leaves the group for a bit to train before the battle with Ash, getting a chance to really be ready for this fight and delivering on a promise of a fight worth remembering. Ash also doesn't waste time in between either, getting a chance to work on his skills and train with his Pokemon, even getting a chance to battle with a side character that comes in and out of the series, Tierno. This double battle has Ash's Pikachu and Sligu facing off against Tierno's Wartortle and Raichu. Of course, anytime there is a Pikachu and Raichu related battle, it's exciting, but that's not the main focus here. Sligu is. Especially when Team Rocket interrupts the battle and Sligu ends up evolving into its final evolution, Gudra. Afterward, when the battle continues, Ash ends up winning, putting him in high confident spirits as they arrive back in Lumio City, meeting back up with Clement with them having to quickly deal with the Clumbot from earlier, now being arrested and locked up based on some security footage of it committing crimes. So now they set off to prove the Clembot's innocence, especially after Clement already reformed the Clembot. This brings back in Alexa, who is there investigating the crimes for her journalism and a Blaziken mask, aka Clement and Bonnie's father, to do his vigilante work. Clement is able to find evidence that it wasn't Clembot, but in fact this evil professor named Belmondo, and his own Clembot, Dark Clembot. Dude wants to be one of those dark Pokemon cards so bad. This leads to both of the Clembots having a battle until Team Rocket tries to get in the way, and Blaziken mask interferes to save them, while Belmondo and Clement finish the battle, where Clement wins and Belmondo is arrested. Blaziken Mask gets out of the area, and everyone shifts back their focus to this gym battle. Clement starts the match using his Bunnelby as Ash chooses Pikachu to start things off. Bunnelby does try putting up an intense fight, but Pikachu is just ready to pull off a perfect counter and take Bunnelby out. Clement then sends out his Heliolisk, with Ash switching to Gudra. But when things seem to not be going in Gudra's favor here, Ash quickly swaps again and sends out Halucha for the battle. Don't get me wrong, Heliolisk has been putting up a solid fight here, but in a moment when Heliolisk is open, Halucha takes advantage of this with a close-up high kick that knocks the lizard out, leaving Clement down to his last Pokemon, 
sending out Luxray. Luxray, compared to the rest of the Pokemon on Clement's team, is clearly the most powerful here, and the one Pokemon he's been training to truly be at this power level, showing a strong force of power right away, knocking out Halucha and trying to turn the tides of the match. Pikachu comes back out to fight electricity with electricity, but Luxray's powers were too powerful for Pikachu, making the match even with one Pokemon left each. Gudra is back on the field and is able to match the force that Luxray itself is, countering its terrain-based abilities and able to end things off with Bide to knock Luxray out, resulting in Ash defeating Clement. I don't know personally if I'd call this a battle to always remember, but I'll give it to Clement. He almost completely flipped the match into his favor, but he still needs to work on training and strategy with his other Pokemon as well. They celebrate a good match against each other as Ash receives the Voltage Badge, only needing three more badges for the region. Clement decides to continue on the road with the group, leaving the reformed Clembot to run battles and operations in the meantime as they all head to the next gym from there. Along the way, they all have some side adventures featuring stuff like meeting up with Professor Sycamore again, who helps his Garchomp Mega Evolve, as well as the Professor finds out the identity of Blaziken Mask, as they then work together in researching more of the mysteries surrounding Mega Evolutions. We also get more time between Ash and Gudra as we learn about Gudra's home, with the end of this resulting in knowing that Gudra is happy back in the wetlands with the community of Pokemon there, and thanks to Ash's training, Gudra can be a powerful protector of the area for the others, and Ash has Gudra stay there, saying their goodbyes for now, promising to always be friends. Ash meets another trainer named Sawyer for the first time, and he wants to be where Ash is at, having more badges and seeing Ash as a skilled trainer. For now though, he wants a double battle with Ash, and of course, Ash accepts it, as Sawyer sends out his Trico and Bagon with Ash using his Frogadier and Halucha. But this all gets interrupted by a fashion show starting up, so there's that. Valerie, the gym leader for Levere City, is also a big and famous fashion designer, so it all takes a higher importance at the moment. For this event, Sawyer is called up to battle against Valerie first, and Ash gets to witness her strategies before his match with her, with Sawyer losing this battle. Later on, Ash gets a chance to officially battle Valerie, with her sending out her Sylveon and Ash sending out Fletchender. Also, Valerie likes to speak to her Pokemon like she's a Pokemon as well, you know, typical pet owner behavior. But the two Pokemon duke it out fairly well against one another, but Ash's Fletchender is able to string enough attacks together to take Sylveon out. She then sends out her Spritzy, who tries with Trick Room to mess with Fletchender. But Ash's strategy breaks through this and Fletchender is able to boost up its stats thanks to Ash coming up with how to navigate this Pokemon from watching Sawyer's battle. In the end though, Spritzy is still able to hit back with a Moonblast that takes Fletchender out as Ash now chooses to use his Halucha. With a bunch of back and forth between the two Pokemon, they get to show off just how powerful each of them are, giving each other a dose of direct attacks and counters. But Halucha here is able to end things off with a high jump kick, defeating Valerie and earning his sixth badge, the Fairy Badge. Sawyer feels both inspired to be a stronger trainer and wanting to learn directly from Ash, as they both agree on having another battle, this time hopefully finishing it. Throughout our time with Sawyer here, we get to see Ash take this mentorship role, really pushing up Ash's character for the trainer he has become thus far, showing full-on growth that isn't just explained, but it's shown. He directly coaches Sawyer to keep him calm and confident in battle, so it's really nice to see this level of maturity and responsibility Ash is displaying. For their battle, Sawyer sends out his Bagon to face off against Pikachu, with Pikachu eventually being the victor of the first round face-off. Next up, Sawyer sends out his Slurpuff with Ash using Halucha. Thanks to Sawyer being too focused on his notebook full of tactics and strategies he tries to jot down, it becomes too late with his head in the books and not in the moment of the battle, and Halucha takes the second round. This is how Ash is able to directly connect the way he trains in battles to help Sawyer be more comfortable with not getting nervous and panicking mid-battle. Next up, Sawyer sends out Trico, as Ash sends out his Frogadier, with Frogadier having the upper hand at first, but Sawyer tries to take Ash's advice to heart, sticking to a calm demeanor and focusing directly on the battle. Due to the level-headedness, Sawyer's Trico is able to feel the same, finding the strength needed in the battle to evolve into a Grovile, making the battle a bit more intense between the two mid-evolution Pokemon. While Grovile is able to offer a way more explosive battle against Frogadier, Sawyer still ends up losing the match once Frogadier ends up defeating Grovile. But Sawyer is a stronger trainer thanks to this battle and thanks to Ash, with both Pokemon forming their own little rivalry from there. Sawyer now heads off to train even more as both trainers look forward to another battle sometime in the future. As we head to the next gym, Ash ends up coming across a Pokemon egg that immediately hatches into a Noibat. And if you know me and my love for both Noibat and Noivern, then you know I'm very excited for this. They spend these first moments with the newborn Pokemon trying to calm it down and also save it from Team Rocket, resulting in Noibat not wanting to leave Ash's side going forward, thus joining Ash's team officially, excited to train and become a strong member of his team. I love it. In the past, specifically during the Ruby 
Ruby and Sapphire and Diamond and Pearl arcs, Ash has entered into some flying-based Pokemon competitions, and here, Ash joins in on a Pokemon Sky Relay race, with Ash's Fletchender, Halucha, and Noibat partaking in it. Through this process, Noibat is able to learn how to fly. Again, this is a newborn Pokemon, and there was no Mother Noivern around to help teach the young Pokemon to fly. So even though Ash didn't win here, only coming in right behind a Starly, Noibat is celebrated for overcoming the whole not knowing how to fly hurdle and doing his best to still take second place, never giving up. Harkening back to things like when Ash and company had an experience coming across Articuno in the anime itself, here we get another legendary bird encounter, this time with Moltres. With the bird going wild thanks to Team Rocket making Moltres angry and just plain irritated by humans, so it begins attacking them with their Pokemon trying to intervene. Through this, Fletchender is doing all that it can do to help, being a fire-based bird as well, and from the attacks that it gets hit with and the determination to help Ash and the others, Fletchender ends up evolving into its final evolution, a Talonflame. Ash ends up jumping in to catch Talonflame though once Moltres sends it flying to the ground, and more specifically, the magma down below. Frogadier ends up helping as well to help fashion its abilities into a rope for them to hang on to as they are saved from a crispy death. Moltres sees all of this and realizes that Ash and company are not the enemies here, and there is no need to attack, no longer feeling threatened. Once again, Ash's bonds with his flying-type Pokemon continue to grow, and even his relationship to Frogadier, which once again is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what is next for the frog's connection to Ash. Now being in Anastar City, we get more into the great lore packed into the XY era of the series, as well as we get to meet Olympia, the gym leader of the city who has special psychic abilities. No, not like Sabrina from back in the original generation, but in ways where she is able to predict certain things about the future. Beyond this, she can project these visions to show the others what she foresees, like this incredibly dark future crisis taking place in the Kalos region, further showing that Ash will have a significant role to play in all of this, and Professor Sycamore, who is there in the city as well, becoming some sort of leader figure that sets a path forward for some point of this whole future mishap. Vagueness aside, this is foreshadowing what is left to come in the series before everything in the Kalos region is wrapped up. Carrie, an apprentice of Olympia, decides to take things into their own hands when seeing this vision as well, interpreting it as the Professor and Ash are the problems in the situation, bringing about this supposed troubling future. As she begins going after them, Olympia interferes, making her stop what she is doing, as Carrie has some issues jumping to conclusions before fully understanding what the vision means. Once things are settled back down, Olympia goes further into what she showed them may just mean, expressing a direct correlation from another vision that involves Ash's Frogadier. That's so Raven over there talks about some sort of curious fate that Frogadier holds as we learn about Frogadier's past as a newly hatched Froakie, training hard by itself and not being fully integrated with the other Froakie around it in the wild. Being the odd one out, Froakie faced hardship amongst the others, being attacked and left injured by them, receiving help from a Nurse Joy, and learning to find the perfect trainer to work alongside to become the stronger version of itself. These standards of the perfect trainer caused us to get the story we already knew, with Froakie not willing to stick by the trainers that it perceived as too weak, and not being compatible with them to journey with. That is, until Ash came along. That missing quality that made Ash different was the universal emotion of love, understandable amongst any language and between species. The bond Ash and Frogadier have is incredibly strong as they both feel extremely close to one another. For some more foreshadowing, Ash and Frogadier are enlightened to more visions from Olympia expressing that Frogadier will evolve once more, and an even greater power that involves Ash will make itself clear soon enough. To what this means, they don't really know yet. For now, they assume it's in relation to Mega Evolving, but from all the research done on Mega Evolution, Greninja, the final evolution from Froki, has no Mega Evolution form. With this information, everyone is a bit excited, albeit maybe a bit scared with some of those uh, future Chaos visions, but none are more excited than Ash and Frogadier. But of course, there are other important matters to directly deal with now, and that's a gym battle, so Ash challenges Olympia to a battle to which she accepts. After dealing with a little attempted thievery from Team Rocket, Ash prepares for this gym battle, with Clement nervous for Ash going up against a powerful psychic trainer who can also see the future. Ash couldn't be more excited though as the two prepare for Ash's attempt at his seventh badge in the region. This gym battle will be a lot of fun too, as it will be a double battle, with Olympia using both of her male and female Meow Sticks at once, with Ash choosing to have a fire and water combo with Frogadier and Talonflame, despite Pikachu thinking he was going to be in the battle. Sorry Pikachu, Ash may have promised you that at the end of the last series you'd be training together to get stronger within the Kalos region, but this is really the Froakie Evolution line series here. Both teams of Pokemon need to work together respectively to win, with both Meow Sticks directly helping each other out in battle. With the battle being hard for Ash to overcome the power of the Meow Sticks, and specifically the attack Future Sight, Ash does ask Pikachu for a favor 
favor in battle, building their bond in a different way where Pikachu meticulously watches the pair of cats to time when their moves are being used. This way, Pikachu can directly warn Ash when certain moves are being used as this strategy helps Ash use the timing to his advantage, commanding his Pokemon to get the Future Sight attack to directly hit the other Meowstic. Frogadier and Talonflame get in sync with each other to both be protective and keeping each other from taking too much damage, as well as allowing a solid opening for them to land some attacks. Talonflame is able to hit one of the Meowsticks with a direct flame charge as Frogadier deals with breaking through his paralysis from them, ending up delivering a massive water pulse that defeats the Meowstic duo and winning Ash the battle. Through some incredible strategies and a strong bond between Ash and his team, he truly worked hard to win this battle, with Olympia even giving him and his Pokemon props for pulling off the win. Noting that there was true love there that helped drive Frogadier to push through its paralyzed state to finish things off. Ash gets handed his badge for winning, the Psychic Badge, but also receives a warning. Olympia expresses that if Ash and Frogadier don't move forward with a sincere purpose that a great danger lies ahead for them. But on the contrary, both of them are going to reach these greater heights in all aspects, from their relationship to their strength and beyond. Olympia also speaks with the professor a bit more when he asked further about the vision from earlier as she responds with, Green fire, a flickering green flame. I saw it engulf Kalos and threaten to consume all of the people and Pokemon in that swirling fire. You will all play a substantial role in the chaos and turmoil, and every one of the villains who tried to steal the sundial. This being in regards to the great chaos and danger she's been referring to from the vision, along with mentioning that even Team Rocket, the ones who tried to steal the sundial in the city from earlier, will have a part to play. Because why wouldn't they, I guess? They, they always do. Ash and company get given an updated Pokedex from Professor Sycamore before Ash sets forward a path to Snowbell City for his eighth and final badge, as we end this season seeing another vision through Olympia's eyes, revealing a pair of glowing green eyes piercing the screen. And wow, what a way to end. Everything this far has genuinely been so much fun, and Kalos Quest gave us an exciting middle season that does a great job at feeling important for Ash's training, his growth, and all the stories of the friends around him, but ending on such a high note for something of great importance to come in the next and final season for the XY generation. And so far, the XY anime has been nothing short of one of the most exciting and refreshing series yet, comparatively to everything else that has come before it. And yet, we have an explosive, lore-filled final season to still get to shortly. Who's that? Pokemon! It's Pichu! Pichu! Our next film in the franchise is Hoopa in the Clash of Ages, and you truly better believe that it is. If you're looking for some crazy battles, a bunch of legendary Pokemon cameos, and the entrance of another mythical Pokemon, then yeah, this film has all of that for you. Hoopa's backstory has its portal rings appear in this desert village one day as it begins stealing food from the people of the town, causing them to get pretty upset until Hoopa begins to conjure up unlimited riches in return, helping build up the village into a wealthy and thriving place for the citizens to live. To show off the power that this Pokemon Pokemon has, it uses the portals to summon more powerful Pokemon to take on, as it becomes thirsty for becoming even more powerful than it already is, getting into a problem when it starts summoning legendary Pokemon, causing the battles to become way more destructive, resulting in the village itself getting caught in the crossfire, giving concern to the citizens as one of them stands against this unbound power, sealing the unlimited strength from Hoopa in a bottle infused with the power of Arceus to trap it away from Hoopa, now putting Hoopa in its confined form, but still able to have its portal ring that have the power to summon both Pokemon and people. Even after 100 years of trying to help Hoopa understand the world around it, there is still a want of power that Hoopa believes it deserves to have, forming this quiet resentment for the time that it's lived in this village. And now as all the years go on since all this happened, Ash and friends enter the picture now, as we have another character who has grown up with Hoopa believing that the mythical Pokemon is ready and responsible to have that type of power let out of the bottle again. The power locked away though forces itself out when finding the opportunity, immediately causing destruction, making Hoopa transform into its unbound power form as they all quickly try to scramble to use Arceus' power with the bottle once more. Team Rocket, however, does their thing and through this, the bottle ends up breaking. But Hoopa resists the evil powers leading to the powers themselves forming a shadow Hoopa all its own, with our heroes needing to now craft a new bottle to contain this evil as an all-out battle of legendary Pokemon commences. Hoopa and our main characters are able to bring forth their own team of legendary Pokemon to fight this shadow Hoopa and its team 
team of, also, legendary Pokemon. Hoopa here has this internal struggle in realizing that the power it can have is too overpowering, easily corrupting it to uncontrollable levels, but needing to come to terms with the humans that took the power away, understanding why, rather than blaming them for stripping it away. It becomes a clear story about dealing with your own flaws and how we view the flaws of others, as well as how on both sides of the coin when facing these resentments, here metaphorically and physically, bottling them up and ignoring them or directly dealing with them, needing to come to terms to grow from it all. Of course though, it's full of fanfare with the Pokemon used for the battle, with Latios and Latias being summoned from the Pokemon Heroes movie, at least the ones that were around by the end of that film if you've seen it, as well as we bring back in Lugia here, and there's even a cool shiny Rayquaza, one that is able to mega evolve, so that's pretty neat. Shadow Hoopa brings back together again the Generation 4 legendaries with Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina, not even stopping there with now having the special primal forms of Groudon and Kyogre, and even Kyurem. Yeah, it's a giant sandbox spectacle of a battle along the likes of you playing with action figures of the most powerful legendary Pokemon you can think of, and clashing them together with everything hitting a resolution, with Hoopa having to face its literal feelings and shedding this resentment, appreciating the people that did this in the first place, as it found the one thing Vin Diesel wants to offer in life, and that's family. Feeling at home with the citizens in this city, who for the past 100 years have accepted this Pokemon as their own and treated it like family even after the destruction. With the darkness and the unbound Hoopa fading away, and a good and calm-natured unbound Hoopa is in the newly crafted bottle, the disaster isn't over yet. All of the summoning of these legendary beasts from their specific places in time and space cause a void to appear that starts tearing apart the area in response, as Hoopa asks for the powers of its unbound form to be released back to it, as they then directly take over Hoopa again. But with Hoopa now being able to control this power and use it for good, having the portals act as a way for the citizens to go through to get them to safety. But in a divine intervention moment, Arceus descends from the sky above, who is able to fully present to Hoopa the responsibility of unlimited power, this time from the actual god Pokemon, and not through powers that make you feel as powerful as a god. Arceus stops the crumbling of space and time before disappearing, with all the legendary Pokemon returning back to their homes. Hoopa is thankful to everyone around it, and vows to help the city that claims it to be family get picked back up and put together again, as they can all live happily. Ash and friends continue on just like it's another day of adventuring. Just because the next season of the XY anime is so packed with stuff to talk about, let's just discuss the next movie first, which is Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. This is the final movie in the canon timeline for the films as well, with the next film completely rebooting the continuity of Ash, creating a different timeline for the following few films. So for now, this is the final movie we will discuss in general that directly deals with this continuity's Ash Ketchum. In this film, we get to deal with two very interesting Pokemon, with that being Volcanion and Magirna. From the jump, an airship and Volcanion are at odds, leading to the pilot trying to shoot out handcuffed devices to stop Volcanion, but only part of it locks onto the beast, with the other of course landing on Ash, dragging him along with Volcanion, forcing the Pokemon and Ash to be linked together for now. Volcanion though is not a fan of humans and is now stuck to one. Together, they catch back up to the airship and learn about the cargo being transported to this kingdom that uses a magical steampunk science that led to one of the inventions here, this literal mechanical marvel being a man-made Pokemon Magirna. The inventor chose to hide Magirna away from the city to stop anyone from using the powers it has for the wrong reasons. And that's where Volcanion ties into things, having met Magirna allowing it to stay in the sanctuary that it oversees for any mistreated or left behind Pokemon from the hands of humans. Again, showcasing why Volcanion doesn't have any room in its heart for humans. And eventually an evil scientist comes to steal Magirna away, and that's how we get to the whole Volcanion chasing after the airship thing that we're currently dealing with, as Magirna is stored as cargo on that airship. Ash and Volcanion are able to get Magirna out of captivity for now and make an escape, as we spend time with them all together. The themes of this film end up being more of a retread than anything, looking into the whole similarities and differences of Pokemon, and if their way of life is better together or better being separate from humans. And Volcanion's intentions are nothing new for the series, the ideals are something repeated time and time again, with it having no trust in humans, having its own experiences seeing these Pokemon in the same 
sanctuary being hurt by humans both physically and emotionally. Throughout the movie, Ash gets through to Volcanion that not all humans are bad with how much good Ash does in being selfless and helping rescue Magirna and fighting with the evil scientists once Magirna is captured again. And with Ash's actions, Volcanion has a change of heart and it welcomes Ash along with all of his friends to come to the sanctuary anytime. And maybe, just maybe, Volcanion won't be as hostile and dismissive of every human based on the actions of some. While the movie doesn't add too much new to the stories we've been told before, it does offer some fun action along with reiterating the highlights of the shared world of Pokemon and humans, bringing all the living beings together to happily live and share in the world with one another. But with all that being said, that's where we're going to leave off for the films. The canon timeline for them ends here with this film, and I am ready to get back into the anime itself as this final season of the XY era proves to be packed with so much to discuss. Who's that Pokemon? It's Heliolisk! <laughs> When we return to the next season dubbed XYZ, we begin on the regional bad guy group Team Flare trying to capture the legendary Pokemon Zygarde. When this is unsuccessful, the leader of Team Flare, Lysander, sends out the team to search for Zygarde further. However, we catch back up with Ash and friends who are still on their way to Snowbell City for Ash's final gym badge. As they stumble across what would be known as a Zygarde cell for how the structure of Zygarde works. But with the Pokedex data informing them that there is no data on the squishy green blob, Bonnie properly names it Squishy. How fitting. Ash is just excited to have seemingly discovered a new species of Pokemon. To add some more fun, Sawyer meets back up with the group as well, as right then and there they lose track of where Squishy has gone, with Team Flare coming across it, causing a commotion that our group takes note of. When they pull up to the scene, they tell Team Flare to back off and let Squishy go, getting into a quick battle that frees the green blob right back into Bonnie's care, as Ash and friends get to escape at one point, getting to a safe place to rest up for the night as Squishy refuses to eat anything offered to it. it then reaches out to these hidden in plain sight camouflage Zygarde cells that it can then view the whole area through, showing that things are pretty clear for now as the core absorbs the sunlight. Zygarde has many forms, with the cells being the base, the core or squishy here being the next form, and from there it goes into the 10% form resembling this dog-like Pokemon, then to the 50% form resembling this more snake-esque design, and then finally a complete form that reminds me more of a Digimon. As the group discusses Gus is going to a place called Terminus Cave along the way to the next city, Squishy starts indicating that it would like to travel there specifically, so they agree to bring this little green blob there. Team Flare shows back up some time later and causes a lot of problems for the group, splitting them up and causing Squishy to gather some of the Zygarde cells in the area to turn into the 10% form to fight back when cornered. Afterwards, Squishy releases the cells and turns back into the core form, fainting from the power it had to use. Our group comes back together and makes sure to help take care of the core, with Sawyer departing from the group, but grateful for Ash's advice once more from their chats. We then get another quick glimpse at the 50% form Zygarde hiding somewhere in the woods, as Ash and company continue towards the cave, walking past the character named Alon, a person who will begin to play a big role in the anime proper, but has had their own personal story, including introducing Zygarde and Team Flare in several Mega Evolution specials, leading to his story finally crossing paths with Ash, regardless if each of them are aware of each other's parts to play in the story. Story, walking by each other as total strangers with a zero acknowledgement. Professor Sycamore gets invited to learning about Squishy and wanting to research this seemingly new Pokemon species further. But we then reach episode 100 of the XY series as it also turns out to be a very special moment for Ash and his Frogadier. During this ninja war between a village being under attack, Frogadier jumps ahead to protect Pikachu from further getting hurt during a battle with the Bisharp, evolving right then and there to pull from an incredible amount of strength needed in the moment, turning into Greninja and using its newer water shuriken to battle. But beyond this, something special happens. A fully connected bond between Greninja and Ash, with Greninja's appearance changing slightly to resemble Ash, with his look being dubbed Ash Greninja. This immense power is able to defeat the Bisharp with ease now, and quickly turns back into the regular looking Greninja, with Ash left with more questions than answers about what just happened. After this whole altercation, Ash and company continue on their way, with those in the village deeming what they witnessed with Ash and Greninja 
representing this hero and protector from the past. Well, until we deal with whatever happened there again, we now get to Terminus Cave, giving us more run-ins with Team Flare and the group seeing that Squishy here can change forms, adding on to the mysteries of Zygarde and the group's knowledge of what's going on. Eventually, we meet back up with Sawyer, with him and Ash already once again battling with one another. For Sawyer, his Grovile has evolved again and now has become a Sceptile, with the rivalry continuing between Sceptile and Ash's Greninja, as their matchup this time is a lot more intense since the last time these two Pokemon battled. Battled. When Sceptile is overpowering Greninja, the bond between Ash and Greninja link once more, with the Ash Greninja transformation taking place again, confusing Sawyer along with another somewhat familiar face we cross paths with briefly at the start of the season, Alon. Alon is watching this battle happen, interested in why his Mega Ring isn't reacting to the transformation he just witnessed, cluing us into this not having anything to do with Mega Evolutions. Ash Greninja delivers a powerful Aerial Ace that takes out Sceptile before Greninja turns back to normal, and both it and Ash nearly pass out fully from whatever power was just used. After the battle, Ash gets asked about what this transformation was, but he still has no clue what happened. Once they get their Pokemon all healed up, Sawyer thinks that Ash may have become Greninja in that moment and Greninja may have became him, symbolizing this deep interlocked connection between human and Pokemon. Who really knows, but Ash thinks it's pretty cool. Sawyer departs from the group once more, with Alon walking into the Pokemon Center, but doesn't make himself known to Ash just yet. Now, being woken up in the morning to Team Rocket doing what Team Rocket does, and that's trying to steal Pikachu. Alon and his Charizard intervene to rescue Pikachu and blast Team Rocket out of there, and Ash is thankful to this mysterious guy, as Alon then offers a battle with him and his Charizard against Ash's Greninja, and of course, Ash is game for this. The battle starts off pretty normal until Alon Mega Evolves his Charizard into its Mega Charizard X form. Similar to Mewtwo, like in the Genesect movie, having a Y form, it also does have an X form, the Charizard being the popular Pokemon Pokemon it is also has an X and a Y form, with the X form fully changing the Pokemon's colorings aside from basic appearance changes. Mega Charizard X dons this slick black and blue look, pulled together with burning blue flames. This of course impresses Ash and everyone watching the battle, but for Greninja, the battle just got a whole lot more intense. As Greninja takes quite the beating in the battle, Ash tells Greninja that they can't give up here, causing the bond between them to connect once more, bringing back out Ash Greninja. This is exactly what a lot wanted to happen, but he's still so confused on this not being linked to Mega Evolving, and how Ash is able to even do this with his Pokemon. The intense battle continues, resulting in the two colliding as Mega Charizard X uses Blast Burn that knocks Greninja out, and showing just how powerful this Mega Evolved Charizard is, with Ash collapsing to the ground alongside Greninja. Once Ash has some energy, he checks in on Greninja, with Alon thinking that the battle was really good, as the defeated Greninja nods in agreement. Alon now properly introduces himself, as they share in a mutual respect after the battle, healing back up at the Pokemon Center once more. Clement wants to help Ash in figuring out this power he and Greninja share or join in on, as they all would like to know more about just what in the heck is happening. Alon heads out on his own path for now, as this wouldn't be the only time these two will cross paths, as neither of the two trainers know that this helps spark the start of the visions Olympia forewarned Ash about last season. The chaos has yet to begin, but all is beginning to build up in the background as the groundwork is being laid. Giovanni is back at it again with Team Rocket, commanding Jesse and James to get involved with capturing Zygarde, and getting in the way of Team Flare and figuring out what their plans truly are, giving us more of a motivation for our Team Rocket trio here to be involved. Not that they haven't been in recent generations towards the original bad guy teams, but I enjoy how they are more integrated here in the overall story, as well as playing into that Kalos ending vision. Squishy uses its connection to other Zygarde forms to try and continue his communications with Z2, another Zygarde core with a different colored gem represented in its stomach that is currently caught up in the Team Flare and Team Rocket struggle, ending up now being captured by Team Flare, leaving Squishy worried about why Z2 isn't responding to Squishy's reach out attempts anymore. Alon, as well, has been shown off to have connections with Team Flare, obviously overlooking the special standalone Mega Evolution specials that give us that connection. Here, directly in the anime, he's in communication with Lysander, and now even helps out Team Flare capture Z2. When the Team Flare members are curious about Alon, and more specifically why he only directly works with Lysander, he only offers up limited information about him being told by Lysander to capture Z2. So there's more to this Alon character than what we've been shown thus far. Well, duh, he's been nothing but mysterious. For now, the group continues on to Snowbell City, which the main 8-badge journey seems to have taken quite the backseat for a while. But along the way, we get another legendary bird encounter 
this time with Zapdos as Ash's Noibat finally gets to shine here. Similar to the Moltres incident earlier in this series, Team Rocket has caused Zapdos to become angry, and in this rage-filled state, Ash tries to help calm the electric bird down. Zapdos is pretty powerful though, and Ash's Pokemon can't do much to stop the situation as Noibat swoops in to help, having to catch Halucha, who was sent plummeting to the ground. As Noibat does this, it evolves into Noivern, pulling out this level of strength that Ash and the other Pokemon have helped the little bat find within itself to become this large bat. Noivern ends up taking on Zapdos directly and it outsmarts it, giving Noivern a direct attack that sends Zapdos now heading towards the ground, with Ash worried for the legendary bird asking Noivern to save it before it hits the ground. Together, Noivern and Pikachu destroy Team Rocket's machine, causing this and freeing Zapdos, to which the lightning bird is grateful for the help and understands who the threat was, and it wasn't Ash. Ash and his Pokemon, as it now flies away in peace. With Noivern now in Ash's arsenal and the day saved, the group get to celebrate in the town festival that they're at, as well as enjoy some fireworks that are on display. I'm just so happy that Ash not only got to have a Noibat on his team for a while, but now has a full-on Noivern. It's just such an awesome Pokemon. Serena's own path has been continuing on as well through the Pokemon Showcase circuit. With many of them already having taken place, Serena finds herself doing well in the Masterclass Showcase, making her way to the finals where she faces her own personal rival, Arya. She holds the current title of Kalos Queen already from these showcases, and sadly, that doesn't change here as Arya ends up winning the showcase and holding on to the title. While Bonnie is sad for Serena, the whole group knows that she gave a great performance, with Ash relating to the feeling of not winning within the leagues he's participated in before, offering the nice perspective that even though she lost, it only means that she still has her dream to tightly hold on to and work towards, again showing the growth of Ash. Arya even speaks with Serena and thoroughly enjoyed the competition, and would love to perform again sometime. To which Serena agrees and holds on to that drive to become Kalos Queen one day. Even Serena's mother supports her and encourages her regarding her dream, knowing she did her best and will continue to give it her all. You know, it's just nice to see that even though she wanted her to do one thing in life, she accepts her daughter's passions and wants her to be happy and succeed. Later that night, when Serena is sitting alone, Ash has a heart-to-heart -heart with her and expresses his personal feelings when he loses or comes up short of where he thought he could be. Thinking that she's already sort of pumped and planning out her next performance, Serena just kind of sits there and admires how much of an optimist Ash is in situations like this. Hey Serena, trust us, it took Ash a lot to be here. We've seen him nearly give it all up before getting his own pep talks of sorts to keep going. And heck, he could even go through this all again for all we know. Is that foreshadowing? Eh, maybe. Ash further goes into him not having the answers of what to do in situations like this, but no matter what, he always rather do what he needs to do to continue on than do nothing at all if he loses, reiterating that nothing he does is a waste of time. The journey is the journey and it will have its ups and its downs, but win or lose, it's all experience and meant to be for that particular moment. This talk means a lot to Serena and it shows just how great of a friend Ash is. The next morning, Palermo, a character who has been in and out of the series in relation to the showcases and has offered Serena some harsh criticism throughout the series, enters back in once more. She's a former Kalos Queen herself and is the sole person behind training Arya to be the Kalos Queen that she is now. But after Serena has lost in the Master Class and has this understanding of why she didn't win mixed with the drive to still become Kalos Queen, Plermo offers to officially tutor Serena, which sparks happiness in Serena, but just for the thought of realizing that she is growing on her own path, to be recognized in this light by Palermo. For now, she turns down the offer, wanting to still travel with Ash on his journey, as Palermo gives Serena her phone number and tells her to give her a call when she is ready. From here, Clement spends time with Ash using his Clembot Mini to show his studies thus far regarding Ash Greninja, as he feels it's this psychological connection that causes them to act and move in sync with one another. He hands Ash and Greninja some battle pulse meters that will gather data to see the difference in brain waves and more in battle to see how it affects each party. While they are working on some testing, Alon comes back around and this becomes the perfect opportunity to truly test things out to get some clear readings. For research, as Ash challenges Alon to another battle. But right this second, Greninja needs to be healed up by Nurse Joy, but they still wish to have some sort of battle in the meantime, with Ash sending out his Noivern and Alon sending out his Matang. This battle doesn't last too long as Matang comes out victorious, but right after this, Greninja is returned to Ash being fully healed up as they gear up for another battle with Alon, with Alon quickly mega evolving his Charizard after a few hits back and forth, 
as the battle starts really heating up. Just like before, Ash's encouragement and cheering on of Greninja to stay in the fight brings up their synchronization, with the data being captured reflecting this. Ash Greninja comes back out now as they need to both be perfectly in sync for this transformation to occur. During the battle, as Mega Charizard X gets some direct hits, Ash begins fully feeling the pain that Greninja feels with it at one point becoming a different source of pain as they desync, resulting in Ash passing out and Greninja changing back into its regular form and doing the same stopping the battle. Ash ends up having a nightmare while passed out that has him stuck with Greninja walking away from him as he begs Greninja to stop, waking up moments later with Greninja still by his side. Ash is worried about the paralysis he faced towards the end of the battle as the power of the synchronization is really harsh on the body and mind. Ash asks Alon for another battle in the future once he has some more training to figure out this whole Ash Greninja thing out and hopefully master it, as Ash also mentions the Kalos League, which intrigues Alon based on it consisting of the pure pure strongest trainers in the region. But for now, Alon goes off again on his own path as we see him look back to a time where he was around Professor Sycamore, as well as now reassuring his Charizard to stay strong, tying him closer to the story and familiar characters even more. We check back in with Olympia who is speaking with Diantha about the visions that she has as they start looking into Zygarde as well as Diantha quickly finding Ash while he's in the middle of training. She explains to them about some of the stuff going on regarding Olympia's visions, with images showing an island that was attacked thanks to Team Flair, as she mentioned that it isn't the only place as other parts of Kalos are being affected, seemingly being the start of the Kalos crisis and that Zygarde is at the center of the whole thing. When seeing if anything new and or weird has been happening for them recently, the whole Ash Greninja thing is brought up with her now wanting to have a battle with Ash to see for herself. Ash of course accepts and his Greninja begins facing off with her Gardevoir, as she eventually mega evolves Gardevoir with Ash getting in sync with Greninja following suit. As they end up getting the upper hand against Mega Gardevoir, the energy between them once again surges and they desync and faint. Diantha wants Ash to keep focusing on learning more about this for the sake of the whole region while she leaves for now. At the same time, Lysander is setting in motion the final steps of Team Flare's project, building us up to the crisis potentially coming together. But Ash and Greninja look to one another in acknowledgement that they must master this power and not give up on each other. With all this side story stuff, Ash has fallen behind in finishing earning all eight badges as Sawyer comes back around and now has all eight of his. Like usual, Ash and Sawyer end up wanting to test their current skills with one another and have a battle. Sawyer clearly has had time to train a whole lot more, taking a lot of what he has learned from Ash and being more confident in battle. While Ash's Noivern is able to take out Sawyer's first Pokemon, Honedge, Sawyer's Kloitzer is able to land some powerful direct attacks on Noivern, taking it out of the battle as Ash sends out Halucha to continue. Sawyer's strategy with Kloitzer once again comes in clutch in defeating Halucha, bringing Ash to his final Pokemon for this battle, which is none other than Greninja. Kloitzer may be powerful, but Greninja was just way too powerful and ends up knocking it out, with Sawyer now sending out Greninja's rival, Sceptile. With both Pokemon giving it their all against one another, Sawyer is doing his best to strategize against Greninja so Sceptile can hopefully score a win against it for the first time. Ash and Greninja though are preparing to get in sync to bring out Ash Greninja, but something doesn't quite align here, causing the transformation to not happen, leaving an opening for Sceptile to knock out Greninja, granting Sceptile his first win against Greninja and Sawyer his first win over overall against Ash. Ash tries not to overthink why the transformation failed this time as Sawyer joins the group on their way to Snowbell City for Ash's final gym battle. We really haven't had a gym battle since last season and we are moving closer to the end of the season rapidly. Finally, they all arrive in the city and we meet Wolfric, the Snowbell City gym leader, with Ash asking for a battle to which he is ready for. Ash starts off with Halucha as Wolfric sends out Obama Snow, with the Snow Beast bringing on hail thanks to its ability. While being pelted with ice, Halucha weathers the storm to still land some close-up attacks, knocking out a bomb of snow with a high jump kick. Avalug gets sent out next and it thrives in the hailing conditions, being able to restore some health after Halucha tries to get some attacks in. This powerful chunk of ice ends up defeating Halucha with Ash thinking of heating things up with Talonflame. And even with the flame, Avalug is still healing from the hail and is able to land an avalanche attack that really hurts Talonflame. As this goes back and forth again, Avalug was just too powerful for 
Talonflame's fire to burn it, causing Talonflame to be unable to battle. Ash relies on Greninja now to come out and help shift the battle. Once things seem to be going better, Ash and Greninja find that perfect sync level and become Ash Greninja once more, with Ash feeling the pain from any attacks landed from Avalug immediately. But Ash's burning desire to win keeps him heated and focused on the battle, and slightly disregarding his trust in Greninja, giving room for Avalug to freeze Greninja and in turn freeze Ash, coming in after with a direct hit with a gyro ball, taking out both Ash and Greninja as he loses this gym battle. Both of them took a lot of damage and need to find a way to truly master all of this, even at the guidance of Wolfric who tells Ash that he needs to have this deep trust in their Pokemon, with Ash specifically focusing on winning and not 100% trusting Greninja to do this alone, having too much control over the bond rather than sharing it. For now, Sawyer leaves again to go train before the league starts with Ash and him looking forward to battling again soon. Ash takes this time to speak with Greninja, apologizing for not keeping a clear and focused mindset. He also then heads away from the group wanting to be by himself and clear his head for a bit as he goes and sits in the woods and ponders over his defeat and everything in relation to his connection with Greninja. Greninja has also snuck out of the Pokemon Center and for now has gone missing. Serena is worried and heads out to look for Ash herself as Pikachu releases Ash's flying Pokemon to help find Ash. We see Greninja is also out there by itself thinking about the same stuff Ash is, with both of them being so similar in general, which is why they are so compatible. Serena ends up finding Ash and tells him that she is there for him, offering to speak to him about anything, returning the same sentiments Ash shared with her during her loss at the showcase. But here comes some momentary regression from Ash as he snaps at her and says that she doesn't understand what he is going through and how it feels. Now mad, she throws a snowball at him and rebuttals with that not being the Ash that she knows. Ash would never just give up or not try his best tearing up before running away. It finally hits Ash why she would be so upset and what her words meant in regards to who Ash has shown himself to be. But upon trying to head back, he ends up slipping down the mountain and actually becoming lost. Who's that Pokemon? It's Fennekin! When Ash still hasn't returned and the weather is getting worse outside, an upset Serena still agrees to help bring Ash to safety. As time passes and Ash is still not found, Serena is filled with regret for yelling at him and just didn't want to see him be so down, wanting him to be the Ash that he usually portrays himself to be. Ash ends up finding himself a cave to take shelter in for now, even noticing some wild Pokemon there who are trying to find some warmth, offering them to come in the cave alongside him. This triggers some memories for Ash, always having compassion passion for wild Pokemon as they all try and stay warm for now. Ash also ends up noticing some Spoopas stuck in the cold on a tree and wants to go and help them out. And as he does, he goes to save the last one as the branch breaks with them being saved by none other than Greninja. But when a gust of wind sends the last Spoopa out of Ash's hands, immediately Greninja transforms into Ash Greninja and catches the little fella. Clearly, Ash and Greninja need some time to chat, and now being back in the cave, Ash opens up about his past and tells Greninja about him helping some Pokemon. Pokemon before they got stuck in a bad rainstorm, sticking by them as they waited it out in a tree, becoming the exact moment he knew he wanted to become a trainer. It's always been about love and compassion, not just about being the best like no one ever was. He apologizes to Greninja once more, and since they are a team, they need to work together, not just Ash dealing with everything on his own. That's part of the reason why they can sync up. They both agree on continuing their training as the storm finally comes to an end. Ash and Greninja end up finding their way back to the others and first apologizes for running off and cuts Serena off before she apologizes for running off too, saying thanks to her for trying to speak some sense into him. Ash and Greninja are fully in sync from this point on, as Greninja reminds Ash of their bond by offering his Pokeball to him, symbolizing their friendship and teamwork. Ash now heads back to face Wolfric in battle. Starting off, Wolfric sends out Bergmite, with Ash sending out Pikachu as this little iceberg puts up a decent little fight, but Pikachu is able to combo a quick attack with his iron Iron Tail to defeat Bergmite. Next, Wolfric brings Avalug out, which was the heavy factor from the last battle to overcome. Already being a tough problem, the Ice Beast is able to take out Pikachu pretty fast with Ash now trying with Talonflame again to redeem its ability to melt some ice from their last match, now being able to deal with Avalug's avalanche attack and surrounding it in flames to defeat it. With Wolfric down to his final Pokemon now, he sends out Abomasnow, with the hail now starting back up as well thanks to it. To even the score back up, Abomasnow manages to take out Talonflame with some swift and powerful attacks, bringing us to Ash sending out Greninja for the finale to this battle. It's not long before both of them agree to transform into Ash Greninja to deliver a 
strong show of power. But because of this, Wolfric has a surprise, showcasing that his Obama Snow can mega evolve, making the battle even more fierce from here. Ash and Greninja hold strong, working together to deal with the more powerful attacks coming their way, and coming up with a strategy to use the icy elements to their advantage, taking the Mega Obama Snow's attention and directing it to the Water Shuriken attack that went after its feet, while they rush in for some Aerial Ace attacks to defeat it, resulting in Ash defeating his eighth and final gym, earning the Iceberg Badge and now being ready for the Kalos League. Now on their way back to Lumio City for the conference, we get a pit stop and checking in with Gudra for a moment, as we also see that in the meantime since we last saw him, Alana has been going around the region and defeating the gym leaders to earn enough badges to enter the league, being a tough competitor for Ash to potentially face there, regardless of where the story with him outside of that will go. Now back in Lumio City, a bunch of familiar faces all show up and are eligible to enter the league, making it once again a league finals filled with some tough matchups. After fully registering for the league, Ash is surprised Alon was able to earn enough badges in time, as the first round of battles begin to show their lineup with who will be facing who. Ash's first battle will be with a character named Titus, but that is if Ash can make it in time as this rude and pushy trainer named Everett corners Ash and forces him to have a battle, to which Ash, albeit reluctantly, accepts. While the crowd waits for Ash, who is nearly disqualified, he ends up showing up with seconds to spare, cutting back to show us Everett back in the hallway being defeated, as well as what happened after the battle, where they shared in a moment of respect with Everett telling Ash to win the league as Ash confirms he will do so. For Ash's first round battle, he sends out Greninja with Titus sending out Altaria. As Ash Greninja comes back out as well to defeat Altaria, and for that matter, Ash fully defeating Titus in the first round and moving on. Rather than give us full detailed battles each round, we get a more sped up montage and clipped up highlights version of things that bring us to know that Ash has made it to the quarterfinals. As we see him then defeat Astrid and her Mega Absol, thanks to Halucha, moving him on to the semifinals. In the meantime, Sawyer has an intense battle with Tierno, as we get to see Sawyer has an even more powerful Sceptile than ever thanks to Mega Evolving it, with the Mega Sceptile being able to win the battle for Sawyer to advance to the semifinals as well. Now, the final two matchups before the finals get announced show off that Alon is in the top four and is facing off against another trainer, while Ash will have to face off against Sawyer, this time in an official capacity and for all the marbles. Before we get to this battle, though, Ash gets a special delivery as Gudra gets dropped off for him, giving us a flashback of him asking for Gudra's assistance in the league, and as a good friend, Gudra agreed to come battle for Ash. Alon easily defeats his opponent, and he is going to be the final battle for whoever wins between Ash and Sawyer, with the both of them prepping for their battle. Ash hypes up his team of Pokemon, giving them a speech in preparation. Before you know it, it's time for their match, with both of them now on the field. Ash is determined to win, with Sawyer feeling the same, having learned a lot from Ash and their time together here and there throughout the region. Ash sends out Halucha at first, who has a nice new cape that it really wanted Serena to make for it. How adorable. Sawyer sends out Slash Slacking as Halucha tries going in on all these attacks with Slacking barely flinching from them, but with Ash thinking that Slacking has to be taking some damage from this. Slacking ends up being able to counter at one point and sends Halucha flying into a tree and knocking it out. At least Halucha had a cool new cape. Ash is impressed with Sawyer, but now sends in Talonflame who tries to hold up fully until there is a clear signal that Slacking is actually hurt from Halucha, to which they all eventually do just like Ash had predicted, giving Talonflame a strong opening to rush in with back to back attacks, defeating Slacking. Sawyer now sends Cloitzer out, a powerful Pokemon of his based on their last battle, and once again, Cloitzer is able to get the better of Talonflame, using its Aqua Jet to forcefully catch Talonflame and deal back damage, resulting in Talonflame being defeated. But now it's Pikachu's turn to battle, jumping in this back and forth fight, and ultimately ending with Pikachu sending an Electro Ball off inside of Cloitzer's pincer when it was clamping down on Pikachu's tail, getting an opening for a direct Thunderbolt from there, giving Pikachu the win. Sawyer, though, is ready to bring weapons into the battle, with him now sending out Aegislash. Pikachu is doing whatever he can to stay in the battle, as Aegislash is extremely powerful, and being able to limit Pikachu's speed to stay in the advantage. But Ash's strategy at one point has Pikachu throw a tree log that gets lodged in between its sword and shield, stopping it from completing its attack, as Pikachu can now hit directly with a Thunderbolt, taking Aegislash out. Now, with the battle halfway over, the battlefield has changed up a bit, giving the field a desert vibe as we 
continue on. Ash brings out Noivern, and Sawyer brings out Salamance. Both dragon types go at it as they have ascended to their final evolution forms from their small basic origins, doing their best to showcase just how much they've grown. The two Pokemon end up colliding one final time with Dragon Rush and Acrobatics, as they end up both unable to battle, giving us a double knockout. Sawyer sends out Slurpuff next, with Ash sending out Gudra, giving Sawyer a challenge of one of Ash's Pokemon that he's not familiar with. Sawyer does his best on the spot to stay focused and not panic, following the advice of Ash, doing well to have Slurpuff be just as strong as Gudra. But Gudra won't give up that easily, even when it seemed like the battle would go in Slurpuff's favor. By the end of it, the two Pokemon hit with moves at the same time, giving us a repeat of the last matchup as both Pokemon are knocked out. With Sawyer now down to his final Pokemon, he sends out Sceptile with Ash sending back out Pikachu. Luckily for Sawyer, Sceptile is able to catch Pikachu with Frenzy Plant, which lifts him in the air and tosses him into the ground, fully defeating him. Now the match is even once more, both trainers down to their final Pokemon with Sceptile's favorite rival coming out next, Greninja. Both trainers get into the battle we've been waiting for between the two, with Ash and Greninja syncing up for Ash Greninja and Sawyer Mega Evolving Sceptile, as the two finally get to go at one another with all that they've got, achieving the most powerful levels that they could be at yet. After a bit, Sceptile seems to have the upper hand in the fight, but Greninja should not be counted out just yet. With the power of Ash and Greninja together forming the largest water shuriken they could, with Sawyer having Mega Sceptile send out a Leaf Storm attack in a bit of a panic. With another collision between between attacks occurring and the dust cloud slowly dissipating, Mega Sceptile is shown unable to battle with Ash Greninja standing as the winner, officially defeating Sawyer and sending Ash to the finals to face Elan once again, in a match that may be even harder for him than this one. Ash and Greninja celebrate their win together as Sawyer feels honored to have had such a battle, still highly respecting and looking up to Ash as they congratulate one another on an incredible battle, shaking hands and looking forward to the next time that they do so in the future. This whole series has been about Ash really Really getting to his most powerful form as a trainer, with so many little mentions here and there about him actually winning the league this go around. Heck, he's made it to the finals and he's one battle away from finally doing so. This is Ash's era and it's all up to this final match. Before we get to the battle, Ash and the others are taught about Bond Phenomenon from Professor Sycamore, explaining exactly what Ash is experiencing with Greninja, making the mystery a bit less mysterious. Lysander comes around and officially meets Ash face to face, with Ash and the others oblivious to the parts they all play regarding the Kalos Crisis storyline. Professor Sycamore gets a moment to speak with Elan as we see a rippled past between them as he went to work for Lysander and his feelings on Mega Evolution Energy, knowing that there are people out there using it for evil and he can't return now until his personal reasons are taken care of. But he is surprised when the professor isn't mad or angry with him and is only met with understanding and support. Lysander however still speaks with Ash hearing him explain about the Bond phenomenon, with Lysander alluding to what the type of power can bring upon the new world. Hmm mysterious, don't you think? Lysander wants to learn more about this from Ash, and he gets him to promise to meet him after the league is over to do so, sending him some luck for the battle before leaving for now. The next day, Ash and Elan enter the stadium for this final battle. It's all led up to this moment right here. Ash sends out Pikachu first with Elan sending out Tyranitar, immediately using its Sandstream ability to be a disruptor for Pikachu in round one. Despite this, Pikachu is able to fight through the Sandstorm to defeat Tyranitar with a final Electro Ball attack when Tyranitar Tyranitar was swinging Pikachu around by his tail, a solid way for things to start off in Ash's favor, but it's no time to get cocky. Ash swaps out Pokemon, sending in Noivern for now, as Elan sends out Weavile. Noivern is able to pull off some counters, as Weavile is a fast and feisty Pokemon, but after getting hit by an Ice Beam and then Night Slash, Noivern ends up unable to battle. Halucha is chosen next, and is finally able to show off those wrestling moves, at its absolute best, hitting Weavile with a flying press attack that knocks it out. Elan now sends out Bisharp, who immediately paralyzes Halucha with a Thunder Wave, making it fairly easy for Bisharp to defeat Halucha. Elan then swaps out for his Unpheasant as Ash sends out his own bird with Talonflame joining the battle. Through their aerial combat, both Pokemon seem evenly matched in their abilities, leading to Talonflame using Brave Bird and Unpheasant using Sky Attack, colliding with each other, resulting in both Pokemon being knocked out. Halfway through, the battlefield changes now, offering a small moment to breathe from the battle. Lysander ominously watches the battle, remarking this moment here, the final part of the match, the climax, will have every eye on Lumio City 
As the battle resumes, Pikachu comes out again as Alon sends out Metagross. Pikachu does his best to face the Metal Marvel and ultimately ends up being able to land a heavy Iron Tail that defeats it. Alon now wants to heat things up, sending out Charizard as Pikachu wastes no time trying to get in a quick attack with a Thunderbolt following, knocking Charizard down a bit as the crowd watches in awe. But Charizard didn't have to use much effort in retaliating as Pikachu was already very worn out from the battle, now being defeated by Charizard's Dragon Claw. Ash now sends out Goo with Alon swapping Pokemon, sending out Bisharp again. The two Pokemon go at it, giving it all that they have, powerful blow after powerful blow, back and forth. Even though Gudra gave a strong fight here, Bisharp is still able to end things off with a final powerful attack as Gudra's endurance fully runs out, resulting in it now fainting. Ash only has one Pokemon left, his true final stand as he sends out Greninja, and it goes right into taking on Bisharp, defeating it. For that, Greninja already had this little stat boost thanks to Gudra using Rain Dance earlier, but will that matter for this final round of the battle? Alon's last Pokemon is his Charizard once more, who he was truly waiting to send out to face off against Greninja. Ash is determined he's not going to lose this time, and that he will win the Kalos League. All synced up, Ash Greninja is here and ready as Alon Mega Evolves Charizard, and their moves here feel so much more powerful and calculated from both sides. Clearly both trainers are giving it their all along with their Pokemon. This leads up to another collision causing an explosion that slowly dissipates with the crowd holding their breath. But surprise, both Pokemon are still standing after that, giving each other a menacing stare. Eventually, Charizard stumbles for a moment, but Greninja does as well, fully falling out of Ash Greninja mode and then fully collapsing on the ground. Sadly, Greninja is unable to battle, meaning that Alon is the Kalos League champion and Ash has once again lost, even after all the signs pointed to him winning it here. In fact, if he never told Alon about the Kalos League, he may have actually just won the whole thing. He created his own defeat in a way. Ash, though, is in a mopey mess. Rather, he looks to Alon and his Charizard in admiration for their strength and teamwork. Ash wears a big smile on his face for how fun the battle was and being proud of how his Pokemon did, congratulating each other on such an incredible battle that pushed them to battle at the best of their abilities. Even Team Rocket is all emotional over this, so much so that they decide to not try and steal any Pokemon right now. Ash's friends hype him up over a great battle as he looks forward to working harder to become even stronger, as he still has a dream to hold on to and nothing on his journey is a waste of time. Oh yeah, Team Flare's plans, that's right. Well, they are ready to begin their operation, firing this Zygarde cell-powered device at Z2, starting their process in the background of the award ceremony, as Deantha gives the trophy to Alon with everyone in the crowd cheering, all except for Lysander who has mysteriously disappeared. Squishy starts to sense that something is wrong with Z2, having an uneasy feeling about whatever's going on. We see that Lysander is now back to his operations with Team Flare and forces Z2 to let loose the immense power that it stores. The device has worked in corrupting Z2, declaring that it will now rid the world of humans, breaking free from its containment as it lifts up into the air, pulling in Zygarde cells from all around, with the energy surging throughout the land from this, causing roots to break through the ground and even into the League Stadium, as Lysander declares a world reborn anew. Squishy ends up running away towards the situation with Bonnie, Serena, and Clement following it, but the destruction and chaos seemingly begins to grow as Zygarde, now fully glowing red, roars over Lumio City. Who's that Pokemon? It's Chespin! Squishy turns into 10% form to move faster as all the others scatter dealing with different parts of the situation, whether it be going to save the others from the damage being done, looking for Squishy, or trying to stop what is going on in general. With Ash and Alon dealing with the roots, Ash finds out more about Alon thanks to Team Flare themselves, as they're all after Ash now that Lysander, the leader of Team Flare, changes the plans to capture Ash, with Alon not really saying or confirming anything. Furthermore, Ash finds out that Alon works directly for Lysander, and with a Confused Ash now in shock, he eventually gets hit with a Confuse Ray that knocks him out with Pikachu trying to fend Team Flare off from taking Ash, but to no avail. Lysander takes control of television broadcasts to state what is going on, mentioning his plans for a new world with Zygarde being upset with humans as well as Pokemon. Only the chosen people will survive this chaos to prosper into a new future, exposing to those not in the know that Team Flare is an evil organization. When Alon arrives to speak with other higher-ups in Team Flare, he flips out on 
on what is going on, both with Ash needing to be captured and Zygarde's role in everything. Elan is brought to Lysander from there, who is shocked to see and hear his true intentions revealed after all this time working for him, feeling lied and used for this horrific crisis taking place. Squishy ends up trying to communicate with Z2, but this only causes it to attack Squishy, as Blaziken Mask ends up joining Bonnie, Clement, and Serena to help out in everything. Ash, along with all of his Pokemon, are then strung up in the air with these clamp-like devices as Elan watches in horror. Ash begins waking up with Lysander, thinking that Ash may be part of the Chosen Ones as Ash witnesses Zygarde's destruction. The true nature of Squishy is revealed as the others learn that Squishy is in fact a Zygarde as well, as the other Zygarde, the Red One, approaches Squishy. With tensions at an all-time high, Ash listens further as Lysander tells him about Zygarde's order of things, watching over the world as it's not to be disturbed or face Zygarde's judgment. With this kind of power under control from Team Flare, it's not just Kalos that could be destroyed from this chaos, but the world as a whole, shaping the new world in Lysander's design. If Squishy also were to fall under the same control and turn red, there is nothing strong enough to combat that. Ash is angry at all this, still being locked up for now and wanting some sort of explanation out of Elan, who still stands there in disbelief of everything Team Flare and, more importantly, Lysander is doing and saying. Squishy and Z2 begin battling one another, causing more destruction with Team Rocket in the background sneaking into the Team Flare labs, trying to figure out a way to help bring their whole organization down, both for the sake of their lives and the world the way they know it, as well as for Giovanni, they'll look really good for doing so. I mean, they were in the original Vision, after all. Alon's part to play on helping Team Rocket was being lied to by Lysander to collect Mega Evolution energy, being promised it would help bring a Chespin named Chespi back out of a coma. A coma that was caused by experiments being done to Squishy before it escaped from Team Flare's capture, thanks to that Chespin's help, and a lot of that is shown in the Mega Evolution specials, explaining the backstories of characters like Alon, his travel companion Marin, and of course, Chespi. The trick was having Alon get this Mega Evolution energy for Lysander, as he would then use it towards his evil plans here, with Alon now realizing that he had unknowingly helped cause this. He was tricked into leaving his position and helping Professor Sycamore, and basically forced into secrecy and being told that he needs to be as strong as possible. As for why Ash is captured, Lysander wants to use the Bond phenomenon that Ash has unlocked with Greninja to reach a new level of power, bringing out devices to control it for himself, sending the two into a controlled state with Elan pleading with Lysander to stop this. Pikachu screams out for Ash, helping get through to him, as well as Greninja, with them now no longer being controlled by the device. Lysander tells Ash that he will be the one to help guide the people of the new world as the time ticks away, as by the next day, the sun will rise on that new world. Ash brushes this off, not allowing to be taken control of, telling Elan to do something, anything to help. It doesn't matter what he helped cause, it matters what he helps be a part of stopping. Ash doesn't care about the bad things that he's done in the past, believing that he is a good person based on their several interactions throughout this season. With Ash's emotional plea, he began sinking with Greninja, giving them the strength to break free from their restraints. Lysander stands in awe of witnessing this power of the Bond phenomenon, seeing it put out more power than Mega Evolution energy. Alan appreciates what Ash has said to him, helping him pull a Troy Bolton and get his head in the game as they now take on Lysander. Lysander goes on about how he once was a generous and caring person, but watched those in need that he helped become comfortable and used to the help, with him seeing that as nothing more than greedy, feeling that this world is full of ugly intentions and a true beautiful world filled with peace requires this forceful reset. Starting a battle with Ash and Elan from there, sending out a shiny Gyarados and his matching Fursona Pokemon Pyroar. On top of that, he then Mega Evolves his Gyarados, making his team here even more extremely powerful than ever. Elan Mega Evolves his Charizard ready for this battle, as Ash is also ready, sending out all of his Pokemon to aid in this fight, working together to help take down Lysander. They end up being able to take down his Pyroar, with the Zygarde struggle still taking place in the background, with Squishy ending up now being corrupted by Z2 and beginning to cause his own mass destruction as well. With Pyroar gone, the battle takes aim at Mega Gyarados now, with Noivern saving Pikachu from one of the attacks heading his way, resulting in Noivern being taken out. Mega Gyarados continues showing off its power by taking out Halucha as well. Outside, with all the other characters still playing their individual parts and helping the situation, a familiar face returns as a shiny Mega Metagross steps in to handle some members of Team Flare, with Steven Stone, last time being seen in the anime in the Ruby and Sapphire series. He does have a role in the Mega Evolution specials, tying him into Lysander's lie, but in general, he enters the picture to help out. Lysander's Mega Gyarados ends up taking out Ash's Gudra, followed by Talonflame as well. Malva, a member of the Kalos Elite Four that was supporting Lysander's efforts, ends up countering the Mega Gyarados in battle with her Mega Houndoom, telling Lysander that the world 
the way it is, is worth fighting for, and that seeing the younger generation taking a stand and helping out selflessly, that there truly is good in the world, believing in the future rather than starting anew. The youngest of the group, Bonnie, has become so brave in the face of everything happening, directly jumping in to help Squishy, standing in the controlled Pokemon's way as it no longer recognizes her and tries attacking her. But she doesn't give up, singing a special song that she would sing to Squishy on their adventures as she breaks down in tears, leading to Squishy slowing down in movement upon hearing it, snapping back a bit to its original self, trying to fight through the control it's under. Blaziken Mask had already taken a hit from Squishy to protect Bonnie, so Mega Blaziken and Dedenne stand in front of Bonnie to protect her as she sings louder. Blaziken Mask uses the strength that he has left to run and shield Bonnie as Squishy's attack charges up, but thanks to Bonnie's song, Squishy is able to fully break through this, sending the attack away from Bonnie and turning back into its original green color as Bonnie and Squishy reunite in complete happiness. Clement and Clembot have been dealing with their own part of this, with Clement taking on a powerful higher up in Team Flare, while Clembot works on taking out the device causing Z2 to be controlled. In order to take out the device, a sacrifice must be made, with Clembot telling Clement that he must consider the many over just one, as Clement is hesitant in going through with the plan, as it would mean Clembot being destroyed. Clembot is grateful to Clement for creating him and even helping reprogramming him after it took over the gym. Clembot tells him that he is saving the world by following through with this, as an emotional Clement shuts everything down, short-circuiting Clembot and taking out the device, releasing Z2 from its control that it was under. Seeing this happen, Ash notes to Lysander that their plans are over and that Team Flare is done for. Greninja, Charizard, and Pikachu are able to finally take out Mega Gyarados, with Lysander still confident that he will reshape the world, jumping off of the tower with Ash even trying to save him from doing so, but it was too late. I would say this was extremely dark of Pokemon, but everything's not over just yet. Who's that Pokemon? It's Frogadier! Frogadier! Serena, Steven, Professor Sycamore, Marin, and Chespie end up at this special giant rock that begins to glow red, shattering the housing that encapsulates it, sucking in Chespie with Marin freaking out as they must get out of the area as the building completely collapses. Steven notes that the rock is part of the problem causing the crisis, not being sure of what is going to happen next. The sentient rock continues on a path of destruction, and the sundial back at Anastar City starts glowing red as well, as Olympia takes notice. Ash and Alon reach Clement, who is still in shambles over Clembot, with Serena giving them a call to explain what is going on now, shocking Alon when hearing about what has just happened to Chespi, with them all heading to meet the rest of the group now. Squishy and Z2 have a discussion regarding the behavior of humans and how it's affected the order of things. Z2 thinks that there is evil within humans as Squishy defends them, believing that humans can be good despite some evil out there. Eventually, Squishy convinces Z2 to trust in these good humans, with Bonnie extending her love to Z2. Ash, Clement, Alon, and Malva find and the others as the Professor and Steven believe that the rock has this similar energy to Zygarde, pulling in Chespi mistaking it for being a part of Zygarde, since the original incident that put it in a coma was from the surging energy of the experiments on Squishy mixed with the energy of a Zygarde in general. They believe that the rock is moving towards where the sundial is, thinking that if the two structures come in contact with one another, the energy that would come from it could itself end the world as they know it. Ash vows to make sure that that doesn't happen and that Chespi is rescued. Alon reassures Marin this as he promises to save Chespi. Team Rocket is still helping by keeping track of the rock, reporting on it as all of the members of the group get their Pokemon to attack the rock with the rock fighting back similar to how Zygarde would. Ash is able to locate where within the rock Chespi is as the rock starts trying to capture all of their Pokemon only to be stopped as the rest of the gym leaders from all around the Kalos region, along with Diantha, come together and attack with all of their Pokemon. While the rest of the group's Pokemon are saved from this rock, the rock itself seems to be completely unscathed, as they all form one giant squad to go after it and stop it from connecting with the sundial and ending the world. Ash has Serena watch over Marin and Bonnie for their safety, with the battle for the sake of the Pokemon world in the hands of this incredible group of powerful trainers. As they begin their assault on the rock, it begins capturing trainer after trainer as Ash and Alon continue making their way forward to the center. Surprisingly, Team Rocket saves Ash and Alon from the rock's attacks, giving them a solid chance to continue on 
as their helicopter gets attacked and destroyed. Eventually, Ash and Alon break into the rock and get to Chespi, fighting off these crystals that try to keep them at bay. Ash helps Alon get to Chespi with the rock now halted in place. Ash and Alon escape from the rock with Chespi in hand, as they still have to figure out a way to take out the whole structure in general. Lysander reappears, still primed on destroying the world and rebuilding anew. See? He's not dead. He attacks the group as they all eventually recover, with Blaziken Mask's mask falling off, revealing his secret identity to everyone, but none more so than Bonnie and Clement, who are both shocked to see this. For stopping Lysander though, Clement points out that there is a device on Lysander's wrist and that they need to destroy it. Squishy has learned a lot about love for one another and working together, showcasing these values that it learned from the humans onto Z2, as they fuse together from calling every Zygarde cell from around the world to come to them as they turn into the complete form of Zygarde, vowing to save the world. With the complete Zygarde facing off against the rock, Ash and Alon have Charizard P Pikachu and Greninja attack Lysander, knocking the device off his wrist as Zygarde breaks the rock, destroying the core. Lysander then falls into the explosion as he denies his plans being foiled, with the day now being saved. Maybe Lysander isn't saved this time, but the world for sure is. Chespi ends up finally waking up from its coma to both Marin and Alon's excitement. Zygarde heads to the group as Squishy thanks Bonnie for all that she has done to help and care for it, as it then starts helping bring the world back to normal. Squishy then says goodbye to Bonnie for now, thanking her one more time for giving it such a worthwhile journey for their time together. Then saying goodbye to everyone as Squishy and Z2 disperse from there. The sun finally shines on a new day, but upon the world the way it was and not a new dystopian one. We now get the aftermath of everyone for their stories with Clement being able to rebuild Clembot. Alon gets an offer from Professor Sycamore to repair their relationship with him being asked to come back and be his assistant, with Alon accepting to do so as he can help Lumio City repair from all the damages. Ash tells the professor his plan now are to head back to Pallet Town and continue on his own journey. Everyone receives medals for their efforts in saving the world, defeating Team Flare, and coming together in the most selfless act possible, being on the front lines for this all. Serena mentioned that she isn't sure what her plans are next, but thinks back to Palermo's offer, considering taking her up on it for Serena to be mentored by her. Later on, Serena helped plan a performance exhibition, with more familiar faces of friends showing back up one last time. With the performance being a lot of fun for everyone, and Serena really beginning to master her craft, her mother watches in joy to see her daughter happy with them, later on fully becoming close again. Ash and Serena spend some more time together as Ash notices her going in and out of a more sad mood, trying to cheer her up with a fun battle between the two, grabbing her hand and bringing her to the battlefield, and specifically the first one that he battled on when he arrived here when he faced off against Clement. This is what makes him feel better when he's not feeling so great and hopes it'll help her as well. She sends out her breaks in with Ash using Pikachu as Breakson is able to land some good hits on Pikachu, allowing Ash to praise Serena on her battle skills. The friendly battle kinda ends there as Ash assures her of what he has learned from his journey. Serena fully makes up her mind about her future, calling up Palermo and declining her offer from before. She wants to travel the world with her performances to bring fun and joy to as many people as she can, feeling like she has a lot to gain from all these new experiences outside of the Kalos region that she can go and have. Palermo is shocked at being turned down, but understands where Serena is coming from, suggesting that she starts taking part in some Pokemon contests, visiting the Hoenn region first as she sets her sights on those new horizons. Palermo leaves her with some nice and encouraging words, looking forward to when she returns. She then tells the others about her plans, to which they fully support her ambitions and following her dream. Ash ends up bringing Gudra back to the wetlands and thanks it for coming to help out in the Kalos League and, you know, for helping save the world a bit, saying goodbye for now and looking forward to when they see each other again. Later on, the group run back into Squishy again, who leads Greninja to Z2 as they telepathically speak with one another, alerting Greninja to the damage to the region that still needs help fixing, and that Greninja would be able to help locate the specific problem areas infested within the underground. Ash understands that this is extremely important, saying that this chaos can never be allowed to happen again. Their bond was no coincidence, and all that has happened on their journey together throughout the Kalos region has been for a reason. He assures Greninja should go help the Zygarde keep the problems from getting worse, and keep the land protected, shaking hands and embracing in a final hug as Greninja officially leaves Ash's team and heads to his own destiny to work alongside the Zygarde. Ash now makes a call back home as Ash's friends get to say hello, with Ash excitingly regaling his mother with stories about what has happened in the Kalos region and alerting her to the fact that he is going to be heading home. Ash speaks with Alon again as he notices that his Mega Ring is gone, as Alon explains that it was given to him by Lysander so he turned it into the police, fully understanding 
that he could no longer Mega Evolve his Charizard for now. The two say goodbye and look forward to a future battle again someday, as we now get to the airport where Ash and Serena are waiting for their flights. Serena's flight is revealed to leave before Ash's does, with her committing to head over to the Hoenn region. All the friends and their Pokemon share in some heartfelt goodbyes as her flight is nearly ready to take off. Serena begins to thank Ash, Clement, and Bonnie for everything, being there for her and helping her find herself as well as the path that she wants to be on. Now speaking directly to Ash, she couldn't be more happy with making the decision that she did in going to find him, calling Ash her ultimate goal, leaving him speechless. Continuing on, she claims to look for him again with her being a more mature woman when they meet, with Ash looking forward to whatever the future holds for their friendship, or maybe more. As she starts descending down the escalator, she turns back around, fully confident with her emotions and feelings now, running back up to Ash as we cut away to only seeing her feet lifting up in the air, implying that she is giving Ash a kiss on the lips, before we cut back to the full frame of her being carried back down the escalator. This leaves Ash stunned, with Pikachu, Bonnie, and Clement shocked by what just happened. Serena leaves the scene blushing as they all say their final farewells for now. After seeing her plane take off, Clement asks Ash for one final battle between them, as they both want to offer each other a fight to truly remember. But not for us to remember, because they don't show it, and we don't know who the winner is. We now see Ash on his plane, reminiscing on the most action-packed, growth-filled journey of his life yet. He arrives back in Pallet Town late at night as he sees the lights are still on at his house, knowing his mother is up and waiting for him. We end this journey with Ash walking into his home as he looks forward to what comes next for him, Pikachu, and any other person or Pokemon he will meet. That, my friends, is how the XY era of the anime ends, giving us three incredible seasons that build upon the last, leaving little time for anything short of fun and exciting. From the way the action in this series is animated to the more heartfelt and character-driven storylines, it's easy to see why the XY anime is ranked among some of the best out there of the entire franchise, with it being a lot of fans' personal favorite series. Ash has fully matured into the best version of himself yet, giving his character so much depth in how he handles situations, how he handles his Pokemon, and how he handles his friendships. The stories here do satisfy so much that we've envisioned for Ash since his first day as a Pokemon trainer, giving us details about his younger days and the person he was back then, showing us what gave him the drive to become a Pokemon trainer in the first place. While he didn't end up winning the Kalos League like the series was leading you to believe, the quick pivot to the world-ending storyline gave us something larger for the anime itself that was done in spectacular fashion to deliver an all-out war to save the planet. Sure, this was Ash's clear attempt at the League where maybe he should have won, but as we will find out by the end of Ash's journey, there is something more special in store. I can gush on and on about how good all three seasons are. Rewatching them reassured just how much I was impressed the first time I saw the XY series, being awestruck by the visuals and character writing, but for now, let's look into the details of Pokemon and companions that were a part of this leg of the journey. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cluncher! Cluncher. First, I would like to bring up Pikachu this series, as we ended the last series with Ash promising to Pikachu directly that together they will become stronger. And don't get me wrong, there were some great moments between Ash and Pikachu this series, but honestly, it felt like Pikachu took a backseat in comparison to a certain water frog. Pikachu remains having such a strong bond all his own with Ash, but nothing too new was brought forth to strengthen it, nor give us the proof that Pikachu was getting to grow stronger here. In fact, Pikachu often got sidelined from the battles even when it was ready to jump in and fight. Pikachu was just as powerful as he was the last season, albeit not as weakened to lose to a fresh starting Snivy, but you get the point. Froakie from the jump became a special Pokemon to Ash, with the two having a mutual respect for one another as we witness this little guy grow more powerful alongside Ash, evolving into a Frogadier and then again into a Greninja, unlocking this special bond phenomenon that brought us the new creation of Ash Greninja and that cool Pokemon card that one time. We got to witness them at their best and their worst, full having to understand one another to sync up perfectly to tap into this ultimate form. This all offered something truly special for the series that turned out being a real treat to witness on screen. Fletchling to Fletchinder to Talonflame became another bird Pokemon for Ash to help train with, becoming a fierce battler with a lot of resilience, wanting to prove itself to grow stronger and stronger, and getting many chances to shine in battle and have a solid connection with Ash. Halucha was a fun Pokemon for Ash to train with as it serves as a fan favorite Pokemon from this generation for many. 
funny, with it having this unique luchador style, all of the attacks it performs feel so flashy and fun. While not being the strongest Pokemon that could always come in clutch in battles, Halucha still gave off some incredible performances, making every battle at least a spectacle to behold. Gumi to Sligu to Gudra was a very wholesome evolution line of Pokemon for Ash to have on his journey. While not having the slimy slug for too long, Gudra was able to become this powerful Pokemon and protector of others that Ash was proud to journey alongside before leaving it in the wetlands to watch over the other Pokemon there, as well as coming in to help Ash whenever it is needed, always ready to face off against a challenge or any danger that presents itself. Noibat and Noivern were great for Ash to have on his team, aside from my own bias towards them. They are great Pokemon, and here in the anime, we got to see Noibat work hard to prove itself in learning how to fly, and from the help of the other Pokemon and Ash, find its strength to become this powerful giant bat in Noivern. Having fewer moments to shine in the series, Noivern still proved to be a great addition to Ash's team. I mean, just look at this majestic Pokemon, it's amazing. Ash didn't catch too many Pokemon this go around for the series, but the Pokemon Ash did catch and train all proved to play some great roles throughout. A tighter team that Ash had time to directly work with each of them to discover even more under the surface with one of them specifically, giving us a truly solid lineup. Clement was a cool companion character to have joined alongside Ash throughout the Kalos region with a passion for inventing and wanting to learn a lot from Ash as he has his own internal conflicts about his other duties of being a gym leader. And thanks to Ash, he ends up being a lot more confident, powerful, and an overall well-rounded person and trainer, especially by the end of the whole journey. Ash loves the inventions that he comes up with, even if they do blow up a lot and or not work properly most times. And his own side story involving his Clembot offers some funny moments, but but also some genuine tragic ones as well. Clement's sister, Bonnie, is a Pokemon-loving kid who is too young to truly have her own Pokemon, but gets to help take care of her brother's Dedenne, and then eventually caring for Squishy throughout the last season. She loves being with her brother and builds an attachment to the rest of the group that makes it hard for her to see them separate at the end, but is mature enough to understand everyone's individual paths in life. And thanks to her friends, she is able to grow in her own ways, not letting her feelings hold her back from being brave, standing up directly to world ending threats. Serena, for sure, is the most important character aside from Ash this series, as she not only gets a fleshed out personal story, like with Pokemon performances, but ties directly into Ash's own history, helping us learn more about a time in Ash's life we never got to witness before the events of the first episode took place. She is drawn to Ash and how he carries himself, from his ideals to his high spirits and more. While she struggles with the feelings that she may or may not have throughout the majority of the series, you can clearly see how much she admires Ash and beyond that, potentially sees something more for them in their future, ending the series on a kiss for their goodbye, with her looking forward to them meeting at a more mature time in their lives. She learned a lot from Ash and doesn't miss the opportunity to return the favor in several circumstances, fully coming into her own before the end of the series and being able to chase her dreams. As far as rivals in the series, there really weren't any traditional rivals, just characters here and there that Ash would see and battle with, but all done in a more friendly manner. If anything, Soy could kind of fit that role, but through this character we get to see Ash become this mentor figure to him, giving him advice and lessons from his own personal experiences. This really does make a difference in how Sawyer is able to become a way more confident and powerful trainer, and I think that is really cool to see. There is Alan as well, but he really is this side protagonist that joins the anime proper after the Mega Evolution Special's timeline intersects at a point in the anime. Sure, they battle sometimes and even in the finals, but his role in the series played a much larger role role, and a much different role than what I would consider to just be a rival. There's Tierno as well, but he was also just this character from a different group of trainers that comes around here and there. I will say that every character though, from all of the ones I just mentioned to all of the gym leaders, the professor, the champion, and many more, all were written very thoroughly to have a lot more nuance in comparison to some characters in the past five generations of the anime. We got a lot of growth between each character. We see how they end up different from how they started off. All done in a natural way that we can see episode to episode, making the series that much more enjoyable to see how everyone plays an important part in this story. Again, this was an incredible series that offered so much to what the Pokemon anime could be. From here though, we take a pretty wild diversion from the norm, and by that I mean a complete revamp of the Pokemon anime that not only changes up the art style, but in many ways takes the action genre that Pokemon falls in during the X and Y generation specifically, and makes it more so a slice 
of Life anime. It's surely a divisive series in the legacy of the Pokemon anime, but for those seeking that action, don't worry, it still has plenty. So when we return with part 7 to the complete guide to Ash's Pokemon journey, we enter the Sun and Moon saga, so grab some sunscreen, this one may burn some viewers. I've been Jordan Fringe, thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, later.